algorithm. We in the building. Let's get it. Yo, salute to everybody here in the building already, man. The greatest chat in the world. You already know what time it is, man. Not just in YouTube. The greatest chat in the world. Welcome to the latest installment of the Graphic and Wasted Show. Or the Wasted and Graph Show, whichever way you like to slice it. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot going on, brother. We yeah. had to come back, brother. Hey, had we did it, man. Hey, so what's good with you, big bro? How you feeling today, man? I feel good, man. I feel good. The sky's not falling. All is right with the Raider world. I like the way the team's being built. I know a lot of people don't feel that way, but 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 I actually do. And uh, you know, I I got a lot of reasons for why you know things went down the way they did. As far as you know, the elephant in the room, the, the fields trade. Yeah, and we're gonna talk about that definitely. You know, I wanted to do something last night. Thank God I actually kind of waited on to pump the brakes. It's always best to have you know, my bro on screen with me so we can actually break this thing down because last night I was a little disappointed. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll start with the Fields thing. You know what I mean? Th th this is the reason why I was disappointed wasted. I, I know that Justin Fields isn't the best available option for us, right? Well, let me say this. At this point, he may have been. But be honest with you, outside of what we may have on this roster, I know a lot of people believe in Aiden. I know a lot of people believe in Minshew. The thing is this, man, a six-round pick, right? Mm-hmm. Pittsburgh goes and gets Russell Wilson. They're probably paying a little north of $4 million for two starting caliber quarterbacks. And we wouldn't pay Minshew seven and a half million a year. That's the only thing. It was like, whoa. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if anything, I'd give up a six to go bring in a dynamic play, play caller like, uh, like Justin Fields, even if we don't utilize him as that guy. Shit, put some plays together. I mean, Getsy knows, you know, how to utilize the guy. I mean, I know they haven't had a ton of success but at the end of the year, they started to kind of figure it out. But this kind of tells me also that Getsy just, I think that he was like, nah, this ain't the move. Bro, look, this is the funny thing. Now, when we were talking about bringing in Justin Fields a month ago, everybody's like, no, no, he sucks. Don't bring him in. Yeah. Now, now all of a sudden, he gets moved and everybody's like, well, why don't you go get him? Now, the reason why Justin Fields went for as little as he went was because this is about contracts. This yeah. is not about we're not playing Madden. This is not about, you know, the, the actual player. The minute Mac Jones went for a six round pick, Justin Fields was going to go for that because that was the comp of the contract. You know, Justin Fields and Mac Jones had the exact same contract, which is essentially a one year deal with a fifth year option, which no one's going to pick up because it's too much damn money. And yeah. with Justin Fields, he has that elevator to where it could rise to a fourth round pick. Now, at this point in Justin Fields career. You have to look at what's going on. Now, Mac Jones is a career backup. Yeah. If you look at him, we don't know that yet. He's a young guy, but he's his his career is trending towards being a career backup. Yes. Most of the guys in that draft, the only one that, that's not terrible is Trevor Lawrence. But the rest of those guys, and that's the danger of drafting in the National Football League. Everybody wants the next guy. Everybody wants a first-round quarterback. It's not always the best thing in the world. If you look at that, that class, Trey Lance already in another team. Oh, yeah. Um, Zach Wilson is essentially going to get cut. He's still right going to get cut, right? Mm -hmm. Mac Jones is already a backup for the Jaguars, right? And then now you have Justin Fields. Now, Justin Fields is a one-read quarterback who has trouble with accuracy. He has trouble with tempo, rhythm. Um, and one of the reasons why the 49ers didn't take Justin Fields and they took Trey Lance is because they've always said that Justin Fields has a problem seeing the whole field. Mm-hmm. Right. So now what you're getting with Justin Fields is you're getting a guy with elite speed and an elite arm. Right. But 
you you know that really doesn't happen in a vacuum. Now, when you when you look at him, when you look at him, you look at the way he played the last game against the Green Bay Packers. If you guys watch that game, the decision was made that they weren't going to bring him back. Yeah, the the, the, the I agree. The, I agree. Distinct difference between him and Jordan Love. Oh, oh, it was Getsy as well. I think that 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 game solidified both of them moving moving on. Yeah. So listen, man. Does it for us? Does it seem like the the best move? Probably not. And I'm going to tell you why. The Pittsburgh Steelers it makes more sense to them because you have a Mike Tomlin who is is on the ropes. They could not go back and bring back Mason Rudolph and Kenny Pickett. No. Then Kenny Pickett goes in the office and tries to act like he can demand some shit. And Mike Tomlin. And the Roonies were like, yo, you got to get the fuck out of here. Did you just see the update right now? And I don't mean to cut you off because you are definitely, you know, cooking with grease right here. But um, it looks as though Pittsburgh's already in talks with extending Russell Wilson. So it's kind of interesting that they traded a six-round pick that could essentially turn into a fourth-round pick with, with playing time, which it probably won't, barring any injuries from Russell yeah. Wilson. But it looks as though they went and traded for Justin Fields. And they they if they're going to really extend him, they're looking at Justin as real, realistically a backup. That, that, that's really what it is. There was one other team that they said that reached out that um, already had a starter in play. And Chicago, you know, Ryan Poles wanted to allow the kid to have a place to go somewhere where he, could, where he can, you know, compete for that number one spot, which I, I'm going to be real with you guys. I don't think that Russell's just going to automatically get that job. I don't. Mike Tomlin is a smart guy. I think that they're going to let these guys compete. And if Justin beats him out, he's going to give Justin the ball. I, I'm, I'm going to be real with you. But – it's just, and it was Philadelphia. That was a team, you guys. That was a team that yeah, we heard in the media that they were going to yeah. do that, and they went out there. And if you look at what Howie Roseman did, Howie Roseman, John Schneider, these guys are old school scouts. Yes, so they go out there, and sometimes they bring in guys who they had a high draft grade on during that particular draft. You look at what John Schneider did; he went out and he got the kid from from Washington because he had a high grade on him. He did the same thing when he brought in Drew Locke. He had a mm -hmm. high grade on Drew Locke. And while Howie, Howie wanted a backup with a t potential starter potential, he went out and got Kenny Pickett. Yeah. But, bro, this is the thing that I, I don't like, right? With us, we're in a totally different situation than the Steelers are. The Steelers are in a situation where they have a roster mm -hmm. where they, they win nine or ten games a year, and mm -hmm. they're trying to get over the hump. Yeah, We are building something, yeah. right? So if we're building something, you know, going to get Ju Justin Fields, a guy that probably – wouldn't fit the bill of what we're trying to do here offensively. It's not the best thing in the world. It would be better for the Raiders to stay where they are and draft a quarterback. Because to be honest with you, you guys see right here from this draft, you can see from the Sam Darnold um, draft. Just mm -hmm. look at look at look at the last few drafts where there were a lot of high high value quarterback talent. It doesn't always work out, man. Now look at this draft. Trevor Lawrence is the only one that kind of has a chance to really work out at this point. Salute the space. Salute the Raiders. See also, I'm going to ask you this. Does this essentially take us out of the Jaden Daniels hunt? Like for sure now, because one move like a Justin Fields going to Pittsburgh to back up Russell Wilson, Kayla Williams is going number one. The commanders, the, the, you know, it's still maybe they may stay. They still may be trying to figure it out between Drake May and Jay and Jaden Daniels at this point. But essentially we were already on, like on, on the outs. We're looking like, okay, it's, it's probably over with the whole Jaden Daniels dream. Yeah. Does this essentially really, truly like eliminate us from the whole Jaden Daniels sweepstakes? Yeah, it, it it's not really a sweepstakes. It all depends on where everyone else has Jaden Daniels slotted. Like we have Jaden Daniels at the top of our list. I think sometimes kind of misguidedly because people are not really doing the real work. People just see that Antonio Pierce has a relationship with him. They look at the Jack Jones thing. They look at all of this stuff. And, they, and he won a Heisman. He had a great year. But at the end of the day, there are some things with Jaden Daniels' skill set to where I was a little apprehensive in moving all the way up to get him. He has an issue thrown to the middle of the field. He doesn't protect himself when he runs. He's a smaller guy. And his style of play is he's always one play away from being yeah. knocked out yeah. for the whole season, right? So for me, look, Jaden Jaden Daniels might not go in the top three. You never know. I know the Minnesota Vikings have have have, have loaded themselves up yeah. And JJ McCarthy is their guy, or Drake May. It's either one of them. If they move, if they move up, they may circle. They may, they may, they may circle Drake May, man. They may spin the block. I'm just being honest. Bro, it sounds as though it's one of those two guys that's going. Bro, I, from what I'm hearing, everything I'm hearing it is is JJ McCarthy's their guy, right? And and to be honest with you, I've said this from the beginning. I think JJ McCarthy is a better prospect than Drake May. You did. You said that. 
I, I, been, I disagree, but but I hear you. I hear yeah, you. but so 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 we don't know. I mean, Drake May, JJ McCarthy, and Caleb Williams could go one, two, and three. And then the Raiders are firmly in play to go and go get their guy. Yeah. It just all depends on how to draft. So no, I don't I I, I, ne, ne, I never say never, but I think what the Raiders are officially out of is moving into the top so, three. So, so let me ask you this before we get the supers in. I want to ask you, and I want the chat to answer this as well. If the league started today, week one. Who is our starter right now? But is it a rookie? Is it an Aiden O'Connell in year two, or is it Gardner Minshew? It's Aiden O'Connell. Okay. Okay. All right. Salute to Jason, man. Blessings to you and the families, brothers. Hope y'all had a good weekend. I had a ball with my dog the other day at the Cigar Lounge. Salute to my guy. I have a Don Mattingly car for you wasted. I'm bringing it to Detroit, man. Donnie so, Baseball, the hit man. One of the greatest <laughs> players of all time. Salute to my guy. And also, man, gifted five. New OLV Raiders Network membership. Salute to one of the goats over here at Shillmore. My brother, Jason, man. Appreciate you, brother. Salute to all the new members. And do me a favor, you guys. Also, if you can, wipe them feet, pay your bar tabs, hit that subscribe button if you guys are not subscribed yet. We definitely appreciate you guys. Oh, we got Walt in the building, man. I love it's it. Great and powerful Walt. I was, I was sent a message this morning. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to say who it was or nothing like that. But it, it was actually, this shit was comedy gold. I got, a, I got a message today. Salute to you, Walt. This is all for you right here, brother. I got a screenshot of you saying, I learned nothing from your show today. <laughs> hey, you were watching someone else's show, and you were in the comment section. Somebody screenshotted that and sent it to me and said, I learned nothing from this show today. That shit is comedy. Salute to Walt, man. The Yo, Walt is the man of Shieldmore, man. Yo, Walt is the, the pit bull. He is the, Walt is the pit bull. Of, of, of this chat right here, the get yeah. off my long gang general. Yes. But, 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 true Raider, man. Now we get to see, was it Fields or was it Getsy? Hopefully not both. Salute to True Raider podcast on the $5 donation. Appreciate you, brother, as always. Salute to Joe. Fields might have been interesting, but aside from uh, experience, he's really not that big of a leap over any of the rookies available. Building the trenches and building a contender takes presence. And, and, and salute to Joe on a $10 donation because – you kind of segued us into the next, you know, segment of the show is we brought back our guys, bro. The boys are back in town. You know what I mean? We brought back John Jenkins. You know, I mean, I'll be real. You know, he's getting up there in age, but 34 years old, had a career year for us last year, wasted, played in all 17 games, true nose tackle, recorded 61 total tackles, four tackles for a loss, one sack, even had a fumble recovery and returned uh, one for 44 yards for a touchdown and also had four passes deflect deflected how do you feel about us bringing back john jenkins with nesta jade on the roster with mccall also you know i mean we have a few other guys that we could potentially you know uh, uh build up to essentially be that nose tackle of the future but how do you feel about bringing uh bringing back the og man john jenkins bro it, it, it makes all the sense in the world i mean john jenkins is only 34 years old everybody actually got 40 years old right yeah well and, and, in the nfl that's 40 but but i hear you i, I hear mean you. It's, it's not not for defensive tackles you know what i'm saying it all depends on how many how many miles you got on you right like john jenkins is, is a rotational guy yes so being 34 years old being even crazy it's not like you're asking him to play every snap no the big, not at the, all. Big, the, the big fellas need to be spelled now i'm glad they brought both of these guys back because yep. these are the guys who essentially helped our defense turn around and now you bring in a superstar to add into that mix and now you have an elite group of yeah. guys in the middle now that's a strength where that was a weakness for t like for 20 years almost right another another reason that i love it is that it's a one-year deal 3.2 million tops it's worth up to so there's probably some incentives there it's a very inexpensive deal for a player that got you got a lot of production out of last year yeah so this is what tom telesco is talking about smart cap moves this is a smart cap move this is a guy that you're not gonna have to reacclimate back into the system this I'm is a guy who 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 is the continuity? He comes back in. You got the young guys behind them. They know the drill. They can get better. And if John Jenkins doesn't do what you what you would like him to do, we got some young guys that can compete for roster spots yeah. right behind him. Yeah, it, it's nothing but nothing but right, man. And, and you could potentially still go get another guy that can play that nose in this draft. You know, what I'm saying in the first three rounds, you could potentially go get another defensive tackle that can take John Jenkins' spot if they don't believe in Nesta Jade or McCall to be the guy moving forward. Also, we brought in Adam Butler, you guys. I love it. Big-time big, big time playmaker for us last year. Very productive. 29-year-old de uh, defensive tackle. One-year deal. We don't. There's no specifics on the deal yet, so I don't know what it is. I'm assuming it's somewhere. It's, it's going to be an inexpensive deal. But a guy that gave you five sacks uh, last year, he also played with John Jenkins, 
in Miami. He also played with Christian Wilkins in Miami, a guy that's uh, <laughs> you're, 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 you're pretty much reuniting with one of the top defensive tackles in the league. How do you feel about bringing back Adam Butler at this point? I mean, to, to me, I would have been upset if they didn't. Agree. This this is a guy who's already played and has a great relationship with Christian Wilkins. Yeah. He's, he's a Patrick Graham guy. They play together yeah. in Miami. Mm -hmm. they, they played well together. Yeah. It, this this is this right here. This is the move I think that's going to be the linchpin to solidify this this defensive line, this defensive front. We we got we got all, we have a mixture of what I like to see on a roster in a positional group. You have mm -hmm. superstars, you have veterans, and you have young players that young developmental players that can kind of take that next leap, and you don't know where their ceiling lies at. So that's yeah. a great thing. We got a few guys on this line like NJS and and yeah. and, and 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 Byron where you don't really know where the well, we season is. Yeah. You don't know. These guys can turn out to be future Pro Bowl players. Then you have a Tyree Wilson who is a high young draft pick who has a, a, a ceiling that's through the damn roof. The roof. Yeah. So, so man, this is nothing but nothing but right. And I think personally, man, bringing a lot of these guys back, it's, it's great. It's, it's great depth at this point also. But I do believe, and what if I said to you, that Tyree is, is going to move back to an edge, be, being an edge rusher. I, th I think he'll still get some reps at defensive tackle on clear passing downs uh, or clear running downs. Let me say that. On running downs, you don't want Tyree in there in the, in the middle of that defense. I, I think he's going to start getting a lot more reps on the outside this year. I think they're going to work you know, on that skill set a lot this offseason. He's been working with Max. You know what I mean? What, what, what do you think about Tyree at this point being that, that, that rotational guy on the outside with Malcolm Coons, which I know will uh, kick in, uh, but – I think it's great. I think I think this is the chance to actually put him back there outside, see what you have in him. So if Malcolm Coos does price himself out of Vegas, you have a guy that's already there that can essentially move in and take his spot. I mean, you have essentially the guy that you wanted to take that spot. That's the guy. Yeah. You, when you draft a guy that high, that's his job. Yeah. Let's, let's just make, make no mistake about it. Mm -hmm. The thing about Tyree Wilson that's so great is that he can play the Justin Tuck role, i.e. how Justin Tuck played for the Giants. He is a guy who can be the th three technique. He can be on the outside shoulder or the yeah. center or between the guard, or he can he can be a guy who can be a defensive end. He could be the Swiss Army knife of that line, and so he can kind of get into the role of being a premier pass rusher. Now, if you look at the archetype for that guy, his comp is Miles Garrett. Yeah, that's big body body wise, like yeah, and all that. Yeah, I mean, body goddamn. Body. Yeah. I mean, there's not if, if that's your comp. Normally, and, 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 and shout out to, to to my best friend Lex, yo. He said he said it when we drafted him because I wasn't high on him, right? Mm -hmm. But he was like, "Bro, guys like that that are that big and that physically talented, at the very least, are just good." Yeah, at the very yeah. least, they're good. He's I haven't seen one of them guys be fucking terrible. Yeah, yeah. And, at, and at this point, with Malcolm Coons turning the corner, it actually helps the development of Tyree. It doesn't rush him to you know to be that guy out there, uh, the second guy on the edge opposite side of Mass Crosby. Salute to Ant-Man. In my opinion, I don't care about JF1. Our chance to draft one of the top three quarterbacks is gone. We already wasted two years of Tay's prime. We're going to roll with AOC, Minshew, and or Knicks or Penix. Telesco needs to nut up and send the pass three first. Salute to Ant-Man. Appreciate yeah. you on a $10 donation, brother. I don't agree, bro. I, I don't agree, guys. You guys got to look at this, man. Just, just go back and look at quarterback drafts. Just look at them. 80% of the starters in the National Football League are not top 10 picks. Sometimes you the answers, like Hondo said, shout out to Hondo Carpenter. The answers that to the test are in the building already. I, I really believe that Aiden O'Connell with a full camp with first first um starting reps with, with him developing. I think that you can get through this season with him and be competitive with him, right? And if not, you got a guy who has started in his league. I don't think that Gardner Minshew is gonna beat him out. Because well, Aiden O'Connell's got the, the leg up on him already. And, and, and it was, it's funny, Wasted. What's the one weakness that everybody says that Aiden has? Can't move. So what what, what is Luke Getzey coming from? A system where he had a, a quarterback that all he did was move, right? Yeah. So I think this is a guy that can potentially unlock, you know, a, a, a skill set that maybe a lot of people didn't think was there. You know what I mean? So we shall see. We'll, we'll see what it looks like in camp. I still believe we're going to get a quarterback early. And I think that they're going to hope and pray that he could be the guy I'm um, in year one, but I, I wouldn't be shocked if Aiden is the guy. Salute to Harry Potter, man. My, my dog, appreciate you on becoming a member. Uh, salute to you. If you guys want to become a member, hit the link. It's pinned up top. One of the best ways to support the channel. Also, go to Wasted Talents channel, Raider Nation Unlimited. Hit the join button. Become a member. It's definitely, definitely appreciated. Salute to Chaos. If we're not moving up in the draft, do you see us trading down? Yes, Chaos. I think that's actually the plan at this point. 
I think they want to trade back. We have eight picks right now. I think that Tom, Tommy would love to have somewhere in that 10 to 12 range. I believe that he would like to trade back into the first or trade back potentially in the early 20s um, and, and maybe take the best player available there. And then maybe you can also move up. Um, got you. Um, also can move up uh, back into the first round and still go get somebody with some of that draft capital that you traded back with. So um, I do believe that that probably is the plan at this point. Yeah, I, I, bro, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. You know, I, I've always asked for this. I've always asked for the Raiders to build this roster kind of how the Ravens did, where they built the roster, built the defense, and, and made, it, made it a defensive-led team, built the trenches, built the offensive line, had the skill position players, and then one year just selling out and going to go get a quarterback, go selling out and going to get a, a free agent quarterback, or going to draft a guy really high. I think that the Raiders – are, are, are in line to do that. And I think that Aiden O'Connell, and I'm not a huge Aiden O'Connell guy, but I like what I see with Aiden O'Connell. If you compare his rookie year to more highly touted rookies last year, he's right on par with them. Mm -hmm. He is right on par with them. And you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You can walk down the hill and possibly, if a Michael Penix Jr. falls to you, take that chance. You can take that chance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or you could take that Spencer Rattler chance and you could be okay. You could be okay. I, I like I, I prefer the Raiders go take the best player available, make all the positional groups on this team and be like a solid team, man. Because I think, you know, if you look at some of the things that happened with the New York Giants over the years, you know, I'm a New Jersey guy, so I've seen what's happened with the Giants a lot. Eli Manning is a number one pick. Eli Manning is a number one overall pick. Don't we make no mistakes about it. He has a resume that's hot. But it was years with Eli when they made it to the Super Bowl with Eli Manning was not very good. And the defense is what carried them in the proper parts of the season. And when the money was on the table and certain throws need to be made, he made those throws and the defense closed the game out. Yep. I could see Aiden O'Connell being that kind of a quarterback. I could, he's a guy who he can make all the throws. We have a lot of talented offensive players. If Zamir White can round into shape. And, and 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 give up some close to the production of a Josh Jacobs with another running back. We're right in line to 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 make the playoffs. I got a question for you right here, and, and we're just gonna kind of spitball, right? I, I want I want the chat to get involved in this as well. But let me get these supers and salute the Niles. Yes, some um, glad we got our OG back. Raiders, salute the Niles on a ten dollar donation. As always, we appreciate you, sis. Salute the yo, yep. Speak, appreciate you on a two dollar donation. Salute to see once again. If any of our QBs ain't it, we are looking at a 2023 Jets year, stout defense, and poor O play. Well, the thing is, this our offensive line is better. Our well, our skill position players are better. Our skill position, yeah. Our run game, we don't know yet. You know, we have Zeus, and only time will tell once we go draft another guy. But our O line is they, they were just dismantled on the offensive side of the football. See completely nathaniel hackett's calling the offense he ain't shit it's proven without aaron Rodgers there who the, who the hell is nathaniel hackett at this point yeah. i see a lot of people kind of making that uh comparison i'm not i'm not i'm not there i'm not there i think that this offense i mean i mean raiders see we put up 62 points 63 points last year in one game i mean the jets got nowhere near <laughs> that you know what i mean so let's just pump the brakes a little bit on that and even if we do run with aiden it's year two you know what I mean? The jitters are off. The anxiety's probably out of there. He's used to the speed of the game. I don't want to do that just yet, Ray. To see, I, I still believe in this O. I think we can get it done. With, with this great defense and the way we're building, if you could put up, you know, 23 to 25 points a game, uh, which would be great for us, I think we'd be on to something. Salute the Raiders C. Salute to Harry Potter also. For the third round pick and fourth round pick, what should the Raiders focus on? Depends on what we're doing in the first and second round. Uh, Potter, to be real with you, um, I just... At this point, I'm thinking corner because I, I, I truly believe that they believe in Mumford wasted. I think that they will go get a corner at 13 if we remain at 13. Keep an eye on Quinion Mitchell. Keep an eye on Terry and, uh, Terry and Arnold. Those are two guys that can absolutely be Raiders come draft day. Yeah. In, 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 you know what I mean? And then if you go get a corner, you potentially look at your tackle of the future. You know what I'm saying? Right tackle or, or you can look at the offensive line. But I'm assuming, Harry, that third and fourth, in the third, I'm going to go guard. I'm, I'm going to go the Gabe Jackson route. I'm going to try and find me a guard. If if Christian Haynes is there out of Connecticut, go get him. If You know what I mean? If you believe that Zach Zinner will be ready for, 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 for next season or you just think that he'll be the guy moving forward for you for the future, go get him. And in the fourth round, go get Ray Davis. Go get Braylon Allen. Go get your running back. 
Yeah. I, I mean, bro, look, w- once again, man, you know, it, we're if everybody had great quarterbacks, then, then nobody has a great quarterback. It, it's not easy to locate the quarterback, guys. Now, nobody's sitting up here and saying that. Aiden O'Connell is the, the second coming. Nobody's saying that he's the answer. We don't know whether he's the answer or not. Yeah. But for damn sure, we don't know of any of these quarterbacks that we're talking about trading up to get off. Yeah. They're, every year, you know, the, these these people in the media call people generational. I remember a couple of years ago, everybody was calling Zach Wilson the Mormon Mahomes. <laughs> you guys remember that? People were talking about moving up and taking Zach Wilson, bro. Like, the I Mormon remember Mahomes. Mahomes. They were saying Sam Darnold. Bro, was Eminem. Yeah, bro, I, like, am I lying? <laughs> no, no, I'm bro. lying. I'm flying, bro. They, dude, I remember dudes getting mad because people didn't draft Josh Rosen. Yeah. They, Josh Rosen is, is, is managing a hedge fund with his rich family somewhere. Facts. Bro, we're, we're not going to credit Aiden O'Connell with what the defense did. I'm not doing that. Like, when we talk about them putting up 62 points, that was the defense. And we were playing against a guy who was freaking terrible. Right with with the charges, it wasn't like we did that. With well, Justin Herbert. Aiden had a big game that day too. Let's not act as though he yeah, didn't. Have but a big game. He, he, yo, like down and distance was great, great yeah, field yeah. position. That was a defensive game, bro. And they were getting turnovers from a third round quarterback who's probably shouldn't even be in the league at this point, right? But there were games like the Miami game where I think you could point to that more so, where Aiden O'Connell showed his medal and showed that he could possibly be effective in the National Football League. Now I'm hoping. That the Raiders can build a strong enough roster to where the quarterback can be carried by the rest of the team. Yeah. Do we have a situation where our quarterback's going to carry our team? Most likely not. And that's how we got to look at this. Yeah. Um, and that that week, he had 248 yards in the air and he had four tutties. So he looked pretty good out there. A, a passer rating of 120.7. I mean, he looked he looked he looked really good out there. So. But I hear you. I know exactly what you mean. Salute to Double, man. I'm ready for competition. Can't wait for camp. Salute to my guy Double on the $2 donation. Salute to Spivey. Two things. Tyree is going to ball out this year. We need to draft O-line first round. I'm not against going out and getting our right tackle to future Spivey, if that's the way we want to go about this thing. But I'm assuming that they love Mumford. I keep hearing things about people in the building saying they love Mumford at, on the right side. So I, I don't know if they're going to reach for a tackle in the first round if they if they really truly believe in Mumford. And he's already provided a lot of versatility for us. A guy that can play on the left side if Colton goes down. You know, he's played some guard at the collegiate level. You know what I mean? So it is what it is, man. But I think they truly believe in what Mumford has going on. Remember this, you guys. He was a seventh-round guy at Ohio State. But if he would have came out the year prior, the first round pick, bro. Yeah, he would probably have been a top two, top three you know, uh, yeah, at least at least the second or third round pick. I've been singing the praises of Thayer Mumford since he got here. You guys yeah. know I'm a huge Thayer Mumford guy because I watched the Big Ten a lot and yes. I saw what kind of player he is. Thayer Mumford, that's exactly what you want in the National Football League. You draft young guys and you hope they take that next step and push the other guys out. I Like, listen, I, you guys got to understand something. Quarterback, cornerback, offensive line are where that first round pick is going. Now, if Michael Penix Jr. is still there at 13, do I would I draft him if Wasted is, is the GM? Yes. Because I think Michael Penix Jr. is the best quarterback in this draft. <laughs> I do. So, salute to emotional Raider. I'm uh, uh, becoming a member. My dog appreciate it. Look, look, look. Wasted. That's how it sounded to me. Wasted. Uh, oh, is that Mitch? <laughs> Wasted. The Yo, F out of here, Mitch. Salute to the F out of here, Mitch. Salute to Graf and Wasted. What if May falls to 13? That would be interesting. The Oregon State OT would be my first tackle of choice. Me too. I love Fuaga uh, easy. But I'm going to say this. I don't think there's any way that May falls to 13. I think that there's going to be a, a QB needy team that's going to be there. I don't think Denver allows Drake May to get to the Raiders. I don't think that Minnesota, if they don't trade up, allows May to uh, uh, to move to move to the Raiders. So if you want May, let's just say he's available there. You know, at seven eight, you may have to reach out to Atlanta and say, "Let me go get him." If if he's starting to drop down a uh, draft board, I don't think that that uh, uh, you know a, a guy with that kind of talent is going to fall to thirteen. I, me personally, I don't. I know you're not that heavy on him, wasted. But at the end of the day, Drake May is still one of the most talented quarterbacks in this draft, and I don't see him falling out of the top three all the way to thirteen. Now maybe you know maybe he falls you know. Somewhere in that six to seven range, and someone goes, somebody goes up to get him. But hey, 
I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not a look, man. The, the thing I look at, I'm just looking at production right now. Caleb Williams, everybody says he's generational. He's great. He's this. He's that. Right. Look, Jaden Daniels is a guy. I think he's really, really talented. I like Jaden Daniels. He's a great athlete. Right. He, he could throw. He could sling it. You know what I mean? The thing with Jaden Daniels that I, I've been watching is the fact that he has an issue throwing to the middle of the field. And when you look at Michael Penix, I'm just talking about strictly as a passer. I do. I think that Michael P I think Michael Penix is the best quarterback for the Raiders. Hey, hey, real quick. R -R, did, did I just read some stats to you? The guy put up four touchdowns. Um, give him his credit. He threw for almost 250 yards in the air and he had four touchdowns. Do me a favor, man. Yeah, I, I mean, and bro, at, at at the end of the day, man, when you look at, you know, Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams has Caleb Williams has a lot of talent, talent, right? Everybody's gonna say he's this, he's this, he's that. Yeah. Right? Jaden Daniels, all these guys, right? But if you're talking about whose skill set translates to the next level for me and what we have, we have elite weapons, bro. We got Devontae Adams, we got one of the great wide receivers. A yeah. whole time playing for us. We mm -hmm. got Jacoby Myers. We, we got Michael Mayer, a budding young superstar. And Trey Tucker, another guy on the, on the, on the up swing. Yeah. Right? So we got we got a pretty decent offensive line. We just need one more player there, right? Mm -hmm. So when you talk about a guy that you know can read NFL, who can process, who reads NFL defense, throws a great deep ball, who throws to, 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 to areas, like accuracy, touch, that's Michael Penix to me. And before this process even started, before we even start talking about Jaden Daniels, Graphic and I were talking about Michael Penix last year. We were hoping he came out last year. I like Michael Penix. I'm not going to sit up here because everyone else likes Jaden Daniels and tell you, to me, with my eyes, I, I, I like Michael Penix. I could be wrong. I, who Nobody's fucking right. But for me, I don't think – if we were to take Jaden Daniels, I wouldn't be mad at all because I think he's super talented. But yeah. I'm not trying to fucking trade four first-round picks – for a guy that I don't even know is going to be successful or not. No, I agree. The thing is this. If they believe, if this regime believes that Jaden Daniels is the guy, then go get him. Like, 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 if you believe in this regime, you gave Antonio Pierce the job, right? You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you brought back, you know, you brought back AP. I know we moved on from Josh, but this is the guy. This is the guy moving forward. Give him what he's asking for. If that's the guy that you want, bro, like, like you either – Win on that hill or you die on that hill. But but, but grab you you act like there's this metric where they can definitely get him. Oh no, no, I'm not saying that. No, look, bro, I've been saying that it's it's far-fetched, it's a pipe dream at this point. But I'm just saying if there's a possible way to go get the guy that that probably can unlock his full potential more than no, nobody more than AP, then go yeah. get the guy. Go get yeah, the guy. I, I just don't think that there's a metric for that unless one of these top three. The only way we get Jaden Daniels, and if he's there, take him, right? Yeah. He's there, take him. But what I'm saying is, is that the only way we get him is if he falls out of the top three. Yeah. That's the only way. If he's a top three guy, we are not getting in the top three. And I believe I, he, and I believe he will be. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't think there's a way that we get him. But, but look, never say never. Well, we may be in Detroit sitting there. Dun, 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 dun. The Raiders have traded up. You yeah. never know. We've seen now. Now, if he's available at four or five, hell yeah, go get him. Hey. But but then also realize, right? Because I'm looking at it from this prism, right? The Minnesota Vikings hold the, the keys the to that. They hold the keys to that. If the Minnesota because they got two first rounders this year, right? If Minnesota were to move up to three, if New England was would be, and this is the problem with New England. New England doesn't have anybody at quarterback right now. They, they, they still got Bailey Zappé, but they're not going to go into the next season with that guy as their quarterback. Bro. Hey, man, the Kentucky GOAT, bro. Yeah, don't don't ever talk about Bailey Zappé, bro. You know that's, you know yeah. that was a graphic guy, bro. Yeah, I know that's a graphic guy, right? Yeah, he's, man. One, he's, he's one of the guys you, you represented, him and Sincere McCormick, right? Sincere <laughs> <laughs> McCormick and Malcolm Coots, right? Yes, yeah, so, I'm so, definitely but, an agent for uh, Bailey Zappé. So. so, look, the, the thing is, is that – Salute to Joe. I, I don't see the Patriots not taking a quarterback now, right? They didn't keep Mac Jones. They don't – there's no, like, you know, they didn't go get Justin Fields. They didn't go get Russ. So they're probably going to take a quarterback. But for, for if any reason they did not, if any reason they did not, that's the only way I see this going down. Because if Minnesota gets up to three, they're taking, like you said, J.J. McCarthy or, 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 or freaking Drake May if he's available. Hey, hey, Duncan, you know what's so crazy? Because we got a Chiefs fan. Salute to him. He's always, always good, dude. Always adds to the chat. So I'm not going to, you know, just, 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 boop, 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 boop. But I'm going to say this. 
I'm going to be real. If Brock Bowers is available at 13, which I don't believe he will be, could you imagine that firepower on the offensive side of the football with him and Michael Mayer at tight end? That is another, you know, potentially a Hernandez and Grunt type situation. If Brock Bowers is available at 13, you guys, and you really are thinking, Tom Telesco's thinking best player available, I'm sorry, bro. I will go take Brock Bowers at 13. It, it, it depends on how, how what kind of prospect, bro. It, do you think Brock Bowers is the next – uh, Travis Kelsey. Do you think Brock Bowers is can be? Man? He can't be. Like, like if, if you think, but it all depends on who else is on the board, right? Like, so if you have a pro, a future Pro Bowl guard on the board, or a future Pro Bowl corner on the board, or you have a, a, a Pro Bowl tight end on the board, you you would probably go with those other positions. If, as far as I'm concerned, I, I just look at the Raiders like this, man. Do you pay your rent, or do you go buy a, a Louis Duffel? Do you hey, pay man. your rent or do you buy Jordans? You know, sometimes, man, you just say, fuck it. I mean, just go get the Jays, man. Salute to 11. AOC played some of the best defenses last year. This is facts. Jets, Chiefs, Dolphins, Vikings, Broncos, et cetera, and survived. Now has a whole offseason to reflect and improve. Salute to 11. Yes. Yes. Logic. Salute to Butler. Jenkins signed a one-year deal. Thoughts. We love it. We love it, for, especially at the price tag, $3 million, up to $3 million. I think it's like three point four somewhere around that range. Um, mm -hmm. Love it, man. A guy that had a career year at 34. I love it, man. Continuity. Um, you know, you brought back Adam Butler. They're both familiar with Christian Wilkins. Our big fish signing, no, you know, no pun intended with their time in Miami. You know, Miami. I love it, man. I, I love it. Salute to uh, Butler. Salute to O as well. Can you imagine a scenario in which we move back, pick up another second and get Penix with our first uh, with our first most mocks, have him going in the second? That won't happen. Yeah, I don't think that he falls to the second. I think that you know, potentially, Omar, this is what I've been saying. You move back from 13 in those 20 in that early 20 range, pick up an additional second, and you can you can potentially move back up into the first round. You know what I'm saying? Like I think that's how you uh go get Michael Penix unless you really say, you know what, he's our guy and get him at 13. Or maybe you just move back from 13, you pick up an extra second, you, you're at that 20 to 23 range, and you just take a Penix there. I, I don't have a problem with that. Salute to O. Um Wipe them feet, y'all. Hit them thumbs up, man. Pay your bar tabs. Salute to all the new people in the building. A lot of new names, man. Appreciate you guys. If you want, hit that subscribe button. It is free. It helps the algorithm. It helps what we do over here uh, with me and Wasted Talent, man. So appreciate you guys. As always, almost 2,000 people in the building. Salute to LBC Raider on becoming a member. My people, salute to Ridge back also in the building. Uh, we see you on the thumbnail. Real ones know, Ridge. Real ones know. Real ones know. Uh, salute to Smooth also on becoming a member. Also, uh, yeah, and they did sign, uh, the Patriots did sign um, Jacoby Brissett also. So they have him and Bailey Zappe, but they still are going to need another guy. I think we totally forgot about bringing his, bringing his name up when we were talking about New England and their quarterbacks. Um, let me see. Hey, Raider Transplant, I can definitely see the Jets going to get Brock Bowers. Could definitely see that, especially after they already identified, you know, their, their, their tackles. You know what I mean? They paid big money you know, on a book in. They got, you know, they brought Tyron in, Tyron in at left. They brought Morgan Moses at right. I can definitely see them make a move for Brock Bowers there at 10, man. Can definitely see that. Um, and let me see. Salute to Smooth. All I know is Telesco's going to do his thing. Talk that shit, Smooth. And salute to Sweet Jazz, as always, on the $10 donation. We appreciate you, family. So glad Fields is blocked. The Raiders are playing chess instead of checkers now. All of us want a, a new QB. But this organization will not reach like we have the past 20 plus years. Enjoy the journey. Salute to us, sweet jazz. Appreciate you on the $10 donation. Uh, Richard, I'm going to be real with you. Bless you. Um, no, I'm not taking a look at Andre Dillard. He's been absolutely terrible these past few seasons. There's a reason why it's kind of bounced around and he's a free agent at this point. I'm not taking a flyer on Andre Dillard. He, 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 didn't, look too, he didn't look good out in Philly. Uh, where was he this past season? Wait, so was he in Tennessee, I believe? I forget, man. I lost track of him when he left Philly. I'm not yeah, even. But, but, no, I'm not taking a look at Andre Dillard at all. I, I'd rather upgrade in the draft or just move with what we have uh, moving forward. Um, let me see. Did he? I, I, I didn't see that. He said Higgins got traded to the Patriots as well. I didn't see that. I didn't see that, bro. I yeah. think I might be trolling. Uh, Tyler says, if we get a Dory Jackson, does that mean we go offensive line first uh, in, in, in round one? I don't think so. Look, Adore, it would be a great pickup for us at this point. Definitely a guy that can come in and be a surefire corner two, but he's not a corner one. If you bring in an Adore Jackson, we're assuming that Jack Jones is going to take the next step at the cornerback position and be corner one. I don't think Adore is the number one guy. Yeah, but but 
Now you got two starting corners. He's a starter. No, no, no. I agree. I agree. I'm just saying that if you want to identify that corner one, if you don't think that it's Jack Jones, you would still potentially have to go get that guy in the first round. Yeah. I don't think Adoree comes in and fixes that problem at all. What did what did what did uh what did AP say? We need we need we need to shut down corner. We need a true corner, right? Yeah. And, and I don't know if that's him just kind of throwing a little jab at his guy, Jack Jones, to say, "Are you that guy?" Because if not, we're gonna have to go get the guy. I think that's him kind of getting at Jack Jones a little bit, saying, "You ready to take that next step?" Yeah. But at this point, we still need a, another bookend corner opposite of Jack Jones. Jacorian has not been proven to be that guy yet. I do still believe in him. He has the speed. He has everything at his disposal to get it done with the skill set he has, but um, just didn't show in year one. So we still would have to go identify that guy. Dory wouldn't be that guy, but Dory would definitely be a dude that I think can come in and, and take a meek spot and be a guy that can potentially be your corner two, give you some uh, reps at special teams. You know what I mean? Dory is, is a dog. But he's not a shutdown cornerback. He's just not. No, I mean, but the thing is, he the quality level of that room goes up with Adore Jackson Jr. He is he is he is better. Than, so so for, so for me, like Jack Jones has the ability to be that kind of player. Yeah. He really does. Jack Jones is is is, is a phenomenal young talent. If he can keep his head screwed on straight, and the fact that Jack Jones hasn't even been in the National Football League for five years yet is is. Also a win-win for the Raiders. You have a young Jacorian Bennett. I have a problem. Go ahead. You, you have a young Jacorian Bennett. You, you, you have another guy. If you go out there and you do bring in a Dory Jackson Jr., that's a guy who's a high-level player. He's not yeah. a bum. Like, so to me, I'm okay with that. Yeah. They're, they're, listen, bro, there are not many years where you'll have a guy like it's almost never a year we have a guy like a Champ Bailey available. Yeah. When yeah. Nambi Asamoa, when he went to the Eagles. They're no, almost never available, bro. So and you got to draft those guys, and you don't know. Or you make a big trade. Or you make a big trade for one of these Marshall Lattimore's or Alexander's of the world. Yeah, yeah, so, like, yo, and you don't know whether the guy that you're drafting in the first round is going to turn out to be that guy, right? Yeah. I agreed. think Jacorian Bennett still has elite speed. Uh, I, 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 he has good bend in his hips. He's yeah. just a rookie, and he needs to understand the full concept of how to play the NFL game. I think I, I think Jacorian Bennett is going to shock a lot of people this year. I do, too. I believe it. Salute to John Jay, my guy. AOC had a better rookie season than Buddy we had for nine years. His rookie season. That's with no first reps being uh, being thrown in the middle of the season, et cetera. I don't know we should give up on Sun that fast. Salute, y'all. Salute to my guy, John Jay, on the $10 donation, man. Look, we're not, look, our, our, we're not done with Aiden. We just know that we need to bring as much competition in, you know what I mean, as possible. And, and, and that's what I want, bro. You, yeah. you said it, I've said it. Now, listen, you bring in a Michael Penix Jr., if he's what I think he can be, I do mean, I take him? Yeah. If, 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 if Michael Penix Jr. comes in, he should beat out Aiden. If he is what we think he is, he should beat him out. Mm -hmm. And then this is not a conversation at that point. Yep. Salute to Joe. AOC played better and threw less interceptions than Brady and Manning in the rookie seasons. Uh, just saying. Don't understand why a lot of people hate on this dude. Because, you know, Joe, let, let's just keep it, let's keep it a buck. It's not that people are hating on Aiden O'Connell. Some people clearly are. But at the end of the day, you, you see how the NFL is going right now. You see Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl, right? You see a guy like Brock Purdy that at times shows dynamic, uh, you know, a dynamic skill set. Like he, he's getting it done out there with the Niners. You see, you know, Jalen Hurts. I know last year he was kind of up and down, but we see how they it's, it's a quarterback driven league. And a lot of these guys are dynamic play callers. Look, look at Burrow, look at Josh Allen. You know what I mean? So I understand why people are questioning Aiden O'Connell. I don't, I don't get the hate, but I understand the question. People want an upgrade. And it's only been one year, you guys, so we don't know if the upgrade is already in the building. It may be Aiden O'Connell that's an upgrade over year one of Aiden O'Connell. <laughs> bro, and that's the, that's the, whatever happened to developing people, bro, look, man, you, you know, you know. Microwave society wasted. We know this. We talk about it a lot. But, bro, this is the thing, bro. I, you know what, 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 what I look at it? I, I understand why people are hating on Aiden O'Connell, right? And you know why they're hating on Aiden O'Connell? Because nobody told them that he was a good quarterback. A lot of people need to, to be told by the media and by other people that this guy's the guy. Like, you, you got all of these people who are, who are blowing Caleb Williams, right? And I've watched Caleb Williams. He does some special things. He does some Mahomes-esque things, right? Yeah. But the thing about Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes would not be Patrick Mahomes if not for Andy Reid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If not for Andy Reid, yeah. Patrick Mahomes was a Clear. guy that everybody said, I can't believe you're moving up and taking this guy. Yeah. And the only reason why 
if you look at what Caleb Williams did in college, right? He threw a lot of touchdowns in the Pac-10, right? He did very well. I'm not discounting the kind of player he is, but he's a guy who is going to a cold weather place. He is a guy who does not do well on, on schedule plays. Yeah. He, like if you watch it, and Dan Orlovsky is the one who pointed me in his direction. I start really watching because yeah. I was big on Caleb Williams. Yeah. And when I see that, yo, he doesn't do his best work under center and just running the play that was sent in. He does everything off schedule, doing spectacular things, throwing the ball across his body, running all around like a whirling dervish, like yeah. freaking Fran Tarkington. Yeah. That to me doesn't mean that he's going to be great. And guys like Aiden O'Connell, when you look at Aiden O'Connell, bro, Look at a guy like a Brock Purdy, a guy who runs the system, mm -hmm. sees the whole field, yeah. accurate, delivers the football to high-level skill position players. That's the metric, ladies and gentlemen. Salute. And I think Caleb Williams is going to be an absolute superstar, so I don't know what Waste is talking about. But I hear you. I hear you. Salute to Silver and Black, man. People who are watching our brother's show, please hit that sub button, both channels. This is the best squad in the game. Fellas, what KC last loss was to us – how about their next loss in their uh, in their ring versus us? Another beating. Salute to Silver and Black Nation on the twenty dollar donation. We appreciate you, family. As always, our people, man. Salute to Larry. If the Raiders move to four, I think they would have to give up an offensive weapon as part of a trade because the Cardinals have no receivers. Yeah, man. Well, the thing, the interesting thing, Larry, is seeing um, where Marvin Harrison is at that point. You know, what I mean, if Marvin Harrison is off the board. Maybe the Cardinals would think about moving back and still going to get one of those other uh, wide receivers. It's a, it's a deep class with wide receivers. You know what I mean? But Marvin Harrison is the, is the prize of this. Of this. I, mean, I know a lot of people think, you know, Malik Neighbors is like him too. He's a dog. Don't get me wrong. A lot of people believe in, you know, uh, 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 Rome. You know what I mean? He's one of those guys as well. But if Marvin Harrison Jr. is off the board by that point, which he, could, he very much well could be, maybe we could make a move with Arizona. Who's to say? Salute to Larry, man. Uh, Mitch says AOC isn't a top 32 quarterback in the NFL. Hey, man, he, he won a ton of games last year. You know what I'm saying? I know the, I know the defense was great. You know what I'm saying? We went, what, 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 what were we last year? Uh, uh, nine and eight, eight, and nine. Yo, look, you know what's funny about that? That that goes to show me how little you know about the game, Mitch. For you to say that a guy. Man, talk, talk, <laughs> wasted, talk. For you to say he's not a top 32 quarterback. And he won games than a lot of other guys in the league. And played a lot better than a lot of the guys in the league, and he's a rookie. That goes to show me you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You just hey, like Mitch. to say things that are that are that are that are salacious. It's bullshit. Hey, Mitch, he wasn't better than Bryce Young last year. He wasn't better than Desmond Ritter last year. Like Mitch, Mitch shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> <laughs> don't drink a boot. <laughs> he wasn't better than every quarterback that the Giants threw out there last year. He wasn't better than every quarterback the Jets threw out there last year. Come on, man. We got to stop this shit. Salute, salute to Shalib on the $10 donation. Did y'all talk about condos mock draft yet? Wait, condos? To my condo, probably. Oh, oh I'm like, I'm like, did John Condo put one out there? Uh, Rattler in the second and Fisk in the fourth. And your boy, uh, uh, Shelly, I, th I think I think uh, our brother Hondo has kind of uh, listened to the algorithm a little bit with, with his mock draft. I've seen that. I've seen the Spencer Rattler. I've seen the Ray Davis. I see, you know, I've seen some names. Fisk won't be available in the fourth round, though. But salute to our brother Hondo. I think they were, you know, great minds. Great minds, man. Salute to Hug also. Food for thought. Ayo, 2,200 yards, 12 TDs, 7 picks, 83.9 rating. Brady, second year, 2,800 yards, 18 tutties, 12 picks, 86.5. Brady wasn't mobile either. Let him cook. Bro, oh, I, look, I'm not yeah. sure. Fit. Look, bro, Brady played, and, and that was the year 2000 and shit. I, you know, I, you know, I had a, I had, Hair down to my damn shoulders back when Brady did that. That was the dead ball era, right? <laughs> so, like, we're not going to go back then and compare these two guys, right? And I'm not saying Aiden O'Connell is fucking Dan Marino. But what I'm going to tell you is, is that he is our quarterback. Yes. I'm not going to come here and I'm not going to say that he has no chance to be good when he only played one year. Yeah, I'm not going to sit up here to do that. I, when he played under Josh McDaniels, right? When he came in and didn't get any snaps and was fucking sabotaged by it. I'm not going to do that, bro. Yeah. Let's get a kid a chance, bro. Once again, chance. you guys, your bet, one of your best weapons, Josh Jacobs, goes down late in the season. Um, you lose your head coach, you know what I'm saying, who is essentially your offensive coordinator. You bring in a guy like Hope Bohart agree that doesn't know how to call, you know, an offense at all. Then you got, you know, AP in there in year one, you know, having to be your intern head coach. There was so much shit that, that went against Aiden O'Connell, and he still, you know, looked pretty good for us, man. So I'm not I'm – not, I'm not done with the whole Aiden O'Connell thing, man. I think that he can be a really good, 
um, asset for us moving forward. Now, is he the starter? I don't know. But even if he's your backup, Aiden, I think I think we're not done with the whole Aiden O'Connell story yet, man. That, that may be the Cody Rhodes of Raider Nation. Salute the guns. What up, fellas? Our OC was at Rattler's Pro Day. Yes, more I see of that kid, the more impressive he looks. In the second and third, great value. What do you say? We are all in on Spencer Rattler, Johnny, over here. I, I would not be against getting him in the second round because I don't think he falls to the third. I like Spencer Rattler a lot, and I think that he's learned a lot you know, from his early years at the collegiate level. I think he's matured a lot more. I've heard great things about him at the Combine in terms of his interviewing process and the way he analyzes the field. I think that Spencer Rattler can be a steal in this upcoming draft. I definitely do. I think he's going to be one of the better quarterbacks in this year's draft. Yeah, I do. I, I like Spencer Rattler. The only thing that I don't like about Spencer Rattler is the, the height. I, I, I normally like my quarterbacks to be 6'2 and above. He's not. You know what I mean? But it doesn't mean he can't play, right? I, I just – look, guys. This whole this whole narrative about quarterbacks and stuff like that, it, it's crazy to me that guys, they're not really looking at this stuff. Now, everybody's going up in arms over Justin Fields. And what nobody's looking at is Justin Fields at the end of those games where they lost, strung together some yards, and made his stat line look a lot better. I've, I've, I've watched Justin Fields play fucking terrible, and then in games they were losing, start coming back and make it look better. We're not looking for that no more, bro. And I don't want a kid. And I'm not saying that I wouldn't have took a flyer on Justin Fields. It's not what I'm saying. Let, let me let me let me contextualize this. What I'm saying is is like let's not act like we allowed Randall Cunningham to, out of the building. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's not act yeah. like you know yeah. what I mean. We we've already seen what it what it is with Luke Getzey and Justin Fields last year in Chicago. It don't make no sense. Yeah. Don't even let's not even do this to ourselves, man. Salute to Niles. And you know what's funny? Niles, we actually went out and signed Harrison Bryant. So he's a really good blocking tight end. So we already have our tight end too right there. We got Zach uh, Zach Gentry actually coming back um in year two with this as well. A guy that we got off the uh, you know, I, I, who was it? The Pittsburgh Steelers practice squad at that point. I, I could be wrong, but um uh I, I Harrison Bryant at this point will be that blocking tight end. And Niles, you know, Michael Mayer got better. As the lead, I mean, as last year progressed, you know, I mean, he got a lot better in the blocking game. You know what I mean? So he's kind of returning to that form that he once once had at Notre Dame. The NFL is just a different beast. You know what I'm saying? You're playing against top defensive ends, you know, top defensive. Ta it's, a diff it's a difficult task to be a great blocking tight end as a young kid at the tight end position. But um, we did bring in Harrison Bryant, a guy that can block um, as a tight end. So there you have it now. Salute to 2020. Think we missed the bus on Wilson slash Fields package. I Me mean, personally, man, I, you know. I just, I'm not so upset about the names, you guys. I'm just more upset. And I said this on Twitter about the compensation that was given for those guys. You know what I mean? That, that's more what the conversation was going to be. You could see when yeah. Mac Jones got traded. Now, now, guys, I don't mean to cut you off, but Joe, like somebody said in the chat, I was capping for Justin Fields. No, I was telling you it was a possibility we can get him. Yeah. Right? And then when we got Luke Getzey, you go back and look. I told you. I don't think it's going to happen now. The Justin Fields thing is dead. He's an elite athlete. Would I take a flyer on him? Yeah. But is it the end of the world that we ain't get him? Fucking no, it's not. Like, he he's just as proven to me as anyone else. It's not like you get Justin Fields and then all of a sudden Devontae Adams is happy with Justin Fields throwing moon balls over his head and missing him and shit like that. Yeah. Get the F out of here. Get the F out of here. I got to say it and waste his voice. Salute the Ten Commandments. Purdy and Lamar are proof. A strong running game and a dominant tight end is critical for a young quarterback. We must support AOC with these things. Salute the Ten Commandments on the haymaker. My dog. Appreciate you, brother. Salute to Yoarni as well. This is why I fuck with you, Ace. Let that old man cook. Respectfully, the GOAT. Salute to Gary. Also on a $10 donation. We appreciate you guys so much, man. Salute to the 2,000 plus people in the building. Whether you're watching on Wasted's channel, my channel, or Twitter, make sure you guys hit them thumbs up, man. You already know what it is. Pay your bar tabs, wipe them feet, and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Salute to Gary. Uh, Lit Wasted Cook. Play the music! <laughs> I can't. I'm not controlling the chat today, man. <laughs> I wish I had it. I, would, I definitely would do it. Let me see. Um... Let me see. Salute to Ted Cavavis. Did you notice that Tyree was in the building to greet the free agents? Yes, he was. Looks like he's putting in that work. Stay tuned. And guess who else was in the Ten Commandments? Max Crosby. Max Crosby. He's always in the building. But guess what? That lets me know that Max is literally practicing what he's preaching. Got his arm around Tyree saying, we're going we to get right this offseason. 
I love it. And I guarantee you guys moving forward, you're going to see Christian Wilkins in a building with Tyree and Max daily mm -hmm. because that's what kind of guys these guys are. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So salute to Ten Commandments with a great comment. Um, salute to Roberto. What's up, fellas? I don't think it's fair to hate on AOC, but I think the nation is craving a quarterback that ain't afraid to use his legs, unlike the last guy. That's pretty much what I was stating right there, Roberto. Real talk is, you know, a lot of people just, you know, want a more dynamic play, you know, play caller at the quarterback position. You know what I'm saying? I, I get it. I understand that. You know what I mean? But like we said, Getsy's there. Let's see what let's see what he can do with, with Aiden O'Connell. You know what I mean? I think the best man is going to win the job. And we don't know if that's a rookie. We don't know if that's Aiden. We don't know if that's uh, Minshew. The good thing is you have a you, you have a good problem on your hands with two guys in Aiden and Minshew that have already won football games at the NFL level. You know what I mean? A guy with Minshew that led a Colts team to the to the playoffs last year, you guys. You know what I mean? Like, this is a good problem to have. You know, we just got to figure out. It, we, we The thing is that's scary about Raider Nation right now, what all of us is, I think we all kind of share the same sentiment, is who is the quarterback? So when you see Justin Fields leave, when you see Russell Wilson's leave, leave, when there's no more, when those are no longer options, everybody's like, what the hell is going on? Who was our guy? You know what I mean? And I think that's the scary thing right now was the big question mark is who is the guy? And I understand that, man. That's the, the quarterback is the most pivotal position in the NFL. You know what I mean? You, you got to identify the quarterback, but we don't know if we already had that guy in the building. We, yeah, we, I don't I, see. This is the thing when people, Talk about being able to use your legs. Being able to use your legs is definitely a benefit, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you're playing quarterback the right way, you shouldn't have to run. Yeah. You should probably be getting the football out, right? Like Drew Brees didn't run around a whole lot. Oh, Ma Ma, you're right. You're right. My, my, my bad, bro. You're right. The Texans did beat him in the last game. The Colts did not go into the playoffs. But I'm saying Minshew has been there. Minshew has been there. Go go ahead. Go ahead. It's my bad. Yeah, but look, thank you, Ma. I'll look, correct bro, me. Look, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Look, we see the, the the Patrick Mahomes, right? Look, guys, if you think that there's a Patrick Mahomes in a draft anywhere in the next five years, I I I I, I got a pink polka dot pony to sell you. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes is beyond, and I don't want to bloviate over Patrick Mahomes because I can't fucking stand him, right? But Patrick Mahomes is probably the guy of this generation. It's looking that way. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's already Patrick Mahomes at this point has already done, he's already matched what Troy Aikman did. Yeah. He's already matched it. Yeah. How, how many you got now? Three? Yeah. He got three. Yeah. Been there four times. Yep. He's already exceeded what Troy Aikman's done. Mm -hmm. Troy Aikman's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. He's already, he's he, he's already matched John Elway. No, John Elway got two. Right? Super Bowl-wise, rings-wise, right? Elway got two. Elway been mad times, though, right? So this guy's already... Yeah. He's already done more than a lot of guys who walked in the, the Canton on their first ballot. That shit is hard to overcome, bro. Yeah. It wasn't like y'all watch people just draft another damn Marino every other year. Listen, focus on building the rest of the team, and let's hope you have a guy that's a battle-tested guy that can compete. Yeah. That's all. Like, some of these guys we talk about drafting, y'all are just projecting them to a place where you think – that they're definitely going to be good, and they might be fucking terrible. I I just want the Raiders to get into that trajectory to where they're picking good players every yeah. single year. Salute to eleven, man. This is facts. We were just saying the same thing. AOC, um, you know, has Getsy this year. Hopefully, he becomes a better quarterback. Ferris, my brother. Let me let me let me state this real quick, man. Um, you know, we we try to get as many comments in as, as as we can. When we have a show with two people on screen, it's a lot more difficult. So it's it's easier to put. We never ask for anything. We never ask for a dime. But we have to put. You know, when people put their hard earned money up, we have to read those first because you know when we're having a discussion, it's very very difficult. Ferris, you know, I read as many comments when I do when I do uh, coffee and convos by myself, and wasted also reads a lot more comments when he does his solo shows. When we're cooking as a duo, it's a lot more difficult to identify the chat when you have 2,000 people in the building. So I want you to understand, Ferris, we are we don't look at you or anybody else who does not send supers any with any less than, like, there's no any less value there. We just have to, you know, read the supers because people are paying the harder money. But Ferris, save some of that for the coffee and convos of the world. Save some of that for Wasted's solo shows because we try to read as many as possible uh, but it's difficult to do that when you have 2,000 people in the building fairs. But salute to you, bro. No, no, listen, we we always read Walt. The great and powerful Walt to get off my long general. <laughs> salute Sorry. to Talib. Thoughts on our place in our division. Chargers got worse. 
No doubt. Laugh out loud. I know draft will change a lot, but my opinion today, we got to be second in our division, right? Love you, bros. Keep up that content. Uh, salute to you, Shali. I, I think at this point we are. I think we are. I mean, and, and, and technically we're still, we, we were the number two team in, the, in our division last year. So until anything changes, we're still there. Yeah, but I do believe Denver got worse. I do believe the Chargers got worse. Um, but we shall see after the draft and how after free agency, you know, how these teams clean up. But yeah, I mean, if, if the NFL started today, I think it's a clear cut, you know, thing that we're, we're the number two team in this division. We got better with one of the top free agents with Christian Wilkins. You know, we're still adding some pieces out there. We brought in a, a, a formidable backup quarterback in Gardner Minshew, and we still have a full draft class, Shalib. So yes, I, I technically number two right now, if the uh, league started right now. Um, salute the trucker Mark in the building too. Appreciate you, family. And salute to Shali on donating five uh, OLV Raider Nation membership. Salute to my guy. Appreciate you on all the support, brother. And salute to all the new members in the building because of Shali, my guy, man. Um, yeah, Rich says, Brady passed the baton to Mahomes and everyone is chasing in the race. There you have it. And salute to Gary. We have plenty of stats and examples of top 15 talents in the draft that didn't pan out, but not much commentary on why. Where is the deep dive on why Brady and Purdy were successful? Do you do, do we need to evaluate differently? Um, I, I mean, personally, Gary, I mean, two of the perfect situations, just as our brother wasted test, right? Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick. And at the time, Josh, Josh McDaniels, a great offensive mind. I, I think it's all about where a lot of these players go. I, I don't, I don't I want to beat up a lot of these players because we, we, we had this debate the other day, wasted, right, about who were busts coming into the NFL. A lot of those were top end talent. If they would have went to other other situations, they could have potentially been top talents in the NFL level. It really does matter where you go. It really does matter where you go in the NFL yeah. because coaching is everything. It's everything. You have to be in the right situation for these guys to unlock your full potential. So I feel bad for you know a lot of these guys like Robert Griffin III, who they just got away from what worked with him in year one and year two, the injury started piling up. Boom. Robert Griffin is gone. Next thing you know, he's a career backup. He's not the guy that we thought he was coming out of Baylor. I mean, we can continue. There's so much talent. You know what I mean? I mean, we even talked about Reggie Bush, a guy that, you know, just wasn't utilized the way he needed to be used. He could have been one of the most dynamic playmakers in NFL history coming out of USC, probably one of the best college players ever. It just, you have to go to the right situation. And a lot of these players don't, they just truly don't. People, places, and things, right? When, when you look at Brady, right, and then there's a certain intestinal fortitude that you got to have being a low-round draft pick and not just accepting, you know, the, the, the situation. And not for nothing, there's a little bit of luck and serendipity too. Yeah. Tom Brady would have never saw the field yeah. had Mo Lewis not knocked out Drew, Drew Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe was a number one pick, had yeah. been to a Super Bowl, was 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 in MVP conversations, was looked at as a top four quarterback in the National Football League at that time. Yeah. Drew Brees, not Drew Brees, but Drew Beledso would have continued to keep starting. Mm -hmm. But Mo Lewis came in like a goddamn missile and knocked him out. People, places, and things. Salute to our yes, brother, Ways, what a haymaker. Salute to Silver and Facts. Raider fan living outside of Denver here. Y'all ever come out this way? You know what's funny, Silver and Facts? I was thinking about going to Denver for the first time this year. I've been to Denver before, but I've never been to a game. But I was thinking about Denver being one of those moves because I just want to be out there between that rivalry and our fan bases. It would be fun. Also, you see report a ton of ATL staff was at Rattlers Pro Day. Could definitely see that. Kirk Cousins is getting up long in the tooth. You know what I mean? They signed him to a four-year deal. They definitely need someone to develop behind him. But um, there was also a lot of other staff out there from other teams uh, as well. So, you know, it's, but it will be interesting to see if Atlanta would draft Spencer, Spencer Rattler as the potential, uh, uh, you know, you know, hey, or, or what, what is it? Potential, uh, What's the word I'm looking Air for? Apparent. Air apparent, you know what I mean, to Kirk Cousins. But salute to Silver and Facts, my guy on a $5 donation. Salute to Sil uh, Frank also on a $2 donation. My dog, appreciate you. Salute to everybody here in the building, man. You know what I mean? Um, it's an art to get your comment. Hey, man, it's hard. It's hard, Graham. It's hard, man. You know what I mean? Uh, salute to Hug. What's more right away than a fourth-round rookie who's told he ain't the guy by the majority of the nation and proves you wrong? This is the way. Go, A.O. Let's go. Let's go. My dog, salute to uh, Frank. Both of you have a good thing cooking together. Love the content, man. So appreciate you, brother. Let me see. Dan says, acknowledge me. <laughs> Raider King says, Docs is all about the bag. Now, hey, man, I do this for a living, brother. You know what I mean? I, I take care of my family with it. So, you know what I mean? But salute to you, man. Salute to Mex. How do you guys feel that the teams in front of us now actually need a quarterback? And JF leaving the Steelers, how do you think that affects us um, if, if it does or not? 
Wait, so you want to take that over? No, it doesn't affect us because at the end of the day, the Raiders understand what situation they're in. They understand that they're 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 comfortable with having Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew bat, you know, battle it out. Now, when you saw what they did in the beginning of free agency, if they were in on Justin Fields, they would have went and got him. Yeah. They would have went and got him, right? They weren't in on him. Yeah. You, you see around the league, there are a lot of people who evaluate Justin Fields as a one-read quarterback who has problems processing, he has problems seeing the whole field. He's a guy who's an elite athlete with an elite arm who can't throw the ball you know, 15 yards and make a completion. That's yeah. how people look at him. Yeah. Right? So if the Raiders, in their infinite wisdom, felt like Justin Fields the answer, they would have got him because apparently he was, he was available. Right? The Raiders are okay doing what they're doing, man, and I'm all right with that. If they feel like building the defense, building the rest of the team, and going out there and letting their quarterback fall to them, I'm cool with that. I don't want them jumping out the window based off of the court of public opinion and reaching on a guy that's really not their guy. Talk. That shit wasted. Salute to Demarcus Webb, our brother, man. Mayor is also training in the offseason with Max. Love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Max is out for blood this upcoming season, man. Salute to Demarcus. Salute to Shalib, gifting five Raider Nation Unlimited uh, memberships, man. Salute to all the new members over there at Wasted, Ta uh, Wasted Nation Army. We appreciate you guys, as always. Salute to Shalib, man, my guy. Salute to Aaron, my dog. What's good, Doc? Slash Wasted. Good stuff, like always. If JJ McCarthy is available at 13, do we take him? What do y'all think? I would. Hell yeah. I don't think he reaches 13. Yeah, J.J. McCarthy's a guy I would take, man. Look, dude, look, are there guys that are more physically talented than than Josh than than, than Aiden O'Connell? Yeah. Are there guys that I would that I would prefer us going to the season? Yeah. But is that the the the, the metric? No. Like if people aren't willing to, to trade with you above you, the Raiders have been trying to move up, bro. They've been trying to move up. But what I don't want to see the Raiders do is take three or four first round picks. And fucking flush them down the toilet, and then the kids are bust. I agree. Then now, with now, 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 now we're in hell for the next three years. Then it'll be the old Al Davis shit, where it's like, damn, if we had our pick, we could have took. I don't want to hear that. I want us to be like taking the emotion out of it. Now that free agency hit. Now that we got Christian Wilkins, right? <clears throat> now that I see that this is going to be a defensive led team. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Like in the beginning of the off season, right after the season, oh, we can't. You know, but Joe, now that I see what's going on, now I'm happy. Well, why are we in the position we're in right now, Wasted? Because of Alex Leatherwood, because of Damon Arnett, because of Henry Ruggs, because of Jonathan Abram. I mean, the list goes on. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, th th we have to be able to draft well. And I'm hoping that, you know, with Tom Telesco, that some of these guys stick around. And, 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 and look, look at the Hunter Renfro club. There's nobody left. There's nobody left. There's nobody left, bro. And people, like, when you really, when you take the emotion out of it, you sit there, because, like, yo, I, I've been going back and I've been looking at some of the grades I've had over the years on some of these quarterbacks. And you become a prisoner at the moment with some of these dudes, man. Some yeah. of these quarterbacks, like everybody acts like every one of these quarterbacks are going to be successful. Mm -hmm. Chances are only one of them are going to be successful. Maybe yeah. less than one of them. Just look at the draft that, that, that we mentioned. Mac Jones, career backup. Trey Lance, we don't know what he's going to be, but he's damn, I don't think he's going to be no star. Yeah. Yo, Zach Wilson. Backup. Fucking right now, Justin Fields is a backup right now. The entire class. We, we can go through the whole list of shit. And, so. and Trevor Lawrence is the only one who has a chance to write that ship and be a star in this league. Yeah, so but, but tough, even, they, even they went and got Mac Jones just in case, you know, Trevor just, you know what I mean? The injuries continue to pile up. Like, like you just never know, man. Raw Dog, I'm going to be real with you, bro. There's a, there's a ton of free agents out there. I'm still looking at Xavier Howard. I would love to bring in a veteran corner. At this point, yeah. the more and more these corners are not taken off the board, the, the inexpensive, you know, the, 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 the price tag drops. So I'm, I'm keeping an eye on Xavier Howard. Um, also, maybe you can bring in a veteran guard just in case. I know I know Wasted doesn't want to bring Greg Van Rotten in, but I would at a minimum, at a veteran minimum, bring him in. He started for you last year. I know that he wasn't that dog at right guard, but he has started for you. I would bring him in on a vet, vet minimum if you don't want to go get a Kevin Zeitler or a Dalton Reisner. I would bring him back uh, on a cheap and go get a guard in the draft that can start over him. But yeah, um, that's, a fact. that's a fact, bro. You know I mean, what I mean? So, yeah, at this I point, feel, I, I feel that I'm with that. You know what I mean? So I would look at a uh, Greg Van Rotten who already knows the system, already knows what's going on, already knows what's, you know, um, you know, he's he's been there. Bring him back. Bring him back and bring in uh Xavion Howard and we can pretty much wrap this shit up for me in terms of free agency because you know we also are going to free up another 20 plus million dollars post June we can be roughly at 50 million dollars you guys 
in terms of salary cap space. And I don't think people realize what that can do for you in the middle of the field when the trade deadline comes up, when some of these players want to get out of their respective organizations and want to move on. We're going to have some money that we can work with during the season as well. So stay tuned. But, yeah, you know, um, I think Tom Telesco is doing this thing the right way, man. You know I mean? I think right now we have about $28 million. I don't know if that's with um, Adam Butler and John Jenkins money off the books. I don't know yet, but the last I checked, we had $28 million um, according to Spot Track. Um, salute to Shalib. Had to show some love to Wasted. You both are the GOATs. I thank you. That means a lot to his family. Appreciate you, man. Salute to Emotional Raider. The live after the draft is going to hit like crack. <laughs> Facts, bro. I can't wait. We're going to be dropping a bunch of a bunch of shit left and right, man. Emotional. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Salute to John. Also, with the 13th overall pick, do we go quarterback, O-line, or best player available? Just depends on who's there, John. Who's there? If one of those quarterbacks drop, take them. If, if all those quarterbacks are off the board and you feel like you can get one of those second wave guys in the second round or potentially trade back up to get them, take the best player available. You know what I mean? That's why I think, man, Quinion Mitchell is still very much still on board. Oh, he's, he's he's play, bro, look, let me, let me tell you something. Thank you for making me do my homework on that kid. Tell listen, me. Man, listen, him and the kid from Clemson are my two Nate, guys. Nate Wiggins, you've been saying that Nate Wiggins is your guy. Yep. Those but are I'm my guys. Man, those, those, guys, those guys are, 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 are fucking special. Yep. I'm calling him Win Yan Mitchell, you guys. I'm starting it now. Just Win Yan Mitchell. Just Win Yan Mitchell. 13. If he's there, best player available, go get him. Fred, man, bless up the waste in the graph. Keep cooking content with the free agent pickups. I have nothing to say until draft day. Salute to one of our guys, one of the OGs in here, Fred Hampton on the $5 donation as well. Let me see. Um, okay, Mitch just said check my DMs. I think he. I think he. I think he's trying to cook wasted talent here. Let's let's let's. Man, that f out of here. Get that f out of here, Mitch. Let me see. Yeah, but no, listen. You sent it to my DM, Mitch. Oh, no, no. It, it was something else. Oh, oh that was it. Send it to my dear, Mitch. Let's get the roast back. That's right, Mitch. We are mortal roast enemies, Mitch. No, he, 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 didn't, he didn't say nothing. He didn't nah, say nah, nothing. I know. I know, man. Shout out to my dog, Mitch, in the building. Um, my dog, Mitch. I appreciate Mitch for even being in here, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Mitch, man. That's, that's I got love for Mitch. That's you, know, you know what's funny, bro? Look. Freaking um, Chugs. Mitch. Graphic wasted row session might be happening. It might be happening. Oh, they don't want no smoke with that, bro. We grew we grew up in them barber shops. Yeah, man. They don't want no smoke. Uh, let me see. Um, the shield is a defensive tool. Raider Nation. Salute the busy. Uh, much no. Kyler Murray is their quarterback. He just made a shit ton of money. All that money is guaranteed. He ain't going anywhere. I, I still believe they put him in a fucked up situation, though. You know, what I mean, they don't really have any weapons out there. Uh, uh, Hollywood's gone. Rondell Moore is gone, which Rondell's not been great by any means. But you know, what I mean, um, they, if they don't get Marvin Harrison Jr., wasted in neighbors. I can see that. Neighbors is a beast, though. Oh, man. he's a dog, bro. But but also think of it. You know, he had Brian Thomas on the opposite side of him. He has some other uh, great weapons. But I do I do believe neighbors is going to be a top a top receiver in the NFL. Yeah, I do. He, he's got that 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 body type, man. Where he seems like he's going to be that 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 deal, man. I think. Yeah. Salute to uh, Niles. I second that. The live after the draft, I'm here with bells on. Salute to our family, Niles Factory, man. Salute to Dr. Phil. Good cheers to the goats, Docs and Wasted. Appreciate you. Get some questions in, you guys. We kind of went over what we had to talk about. We're an hour and 15 minutes in. It's y'all show now. Now, this is the time, Ferris, to get your shit off, King. This is your time. If you got a question, put it in the comment section, and we'll try and get as many comments in as possible. Um... No, Robert, they're not going to move on from Justin Herbert. It's funny. Me, me, me and Wace were talking about that. Um, that. It'd be funny, right, if they just moved on from and picked up a bunch of draft capital and took J.J. McCarthy. That yeah. would be hilarious. Man, man listen, that the owners, you guys think that just because Jim Harbaugh is there, he could just do what he wants. That owner ain't signing off on that. No. They, they ain't signing off on the, the, you know, the great American golden arm quarterback being run out of Los Angeles when they have, like, almost nothing really to to, to, to market. To the fans, there. they would never, they would never sign off on that. Don't even get your mind caught up in that nonsense. Yes, uh, Raider Nation exit. We will be at the draft in Detroit in April next month. 
I'm already booked and stuff. I don't know if Wasted is. He keeps saying he's going to find the ticket and shit, but I don't know if he's actually booked yet. You know what I mean? Our brother Waste is uh, very inconsistent with the traveling plan. So, um, you know, but either way, I'll be there. Stu will be there. Stu's driving out from Indiana. So we will be in Detroit. I have this weird nagging suspicion that Waste is going to uh, end up not going last minute. So, yeah. So stay tuned. Now, stay don't, tuned. Try, don't try to press me on the live. Man. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Listen, stay tuned. I, listen, did I tell you I was going? We're going. Absolutely. I'm going, damn it. Rondell Moore got traded to Atlanta, D. So he's he's already under contract and with the Atlanta Falcons. Shut yeah. this shit. What is he talking? What is he talking about? That, that shit ain't leather, man. <laughs> Let me see. Will we trade up to 14 to 17 to grab a right tackle in a corner? What do you mean, George? Do you mean draft at 13 and then move back up with that second round pick and, and, and some like what what do you mean? I don't know. Elaborate, brother. Elaborate. Let me see. Um Salute to Jesus. Who's your top five uh, quarterbacks this year in draft comparisons? Mm. So I see. I hate doing. I, I hate doing comps, man. Because you know, what I mean, you can't put that kind of pressure on these young guys. But I mean, realistically, bro, when you look at a guy like Caleb Williams, you're gonna say Mahomes, right? Because of the because of the you know the the the, the heroics. You know what I mean? That you know what I mean. The running around and creating plays with his legs and being able to extend plays. Uh, Caleb's my number one, and I'm going to say Mahomes, even though I don't think he's a Mahomes by any means. Um, number two would be, I like Michael Pennis Jr. That, that's my guy. That's my guy. Uh, you know what I mean? Me and Wasted have said this all year long. Um, who would be a Pennix, a, a great comparison with you in terms of Pennix? I mean, he's like a bigger Tua. Okay. You know I can see that. He's very accurate. He's lefty. You know what I mean? From that perspective. Okay. But, but, but to be honest with you, if he was right-handed, to me, he's like CJ Stroud. Okay. Ooh, I like that. Then I'm going Drake May. He's my third guy. I know Wasted doesn't have him that high, but I go Drake May. And to be real with you, man, I I know a lot of people don't see this, and I may get killed for it a little bit, but I, I see some Justin Herbert in this game. I do. I see some Herbert in Drake May's game. So um, who else? Spencer Rattler. And then we already know you got to kind of give him the same Mahomes comp, right? Because <laughs> he's always been baby Mahomes. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and then at that point, JJ McCarthy, maybe JJ McCarthy. Who, who was a great comp for him? JJ McCarthy. JJ McCarthy. JJ McCarthy that it's nobody. You know, I mean, some people because you know what the thing is when you see him, you're like, oh well, he's a uh, Troy Aikman or something like that or whatever. But he can move. Like JJ McCarthy is very, very inter. He's a very, very interesting prospect. He's a yeah. guy that I would like to take if if. I don't think we're going to have a chance to take him. I, I think Denver is probably. Ooh, eh. I like that. With my, Jared my Goff. I see some Goffs. I see some uh, some early Kirk Cousins. I see a Brock Purdy. I can definitely see that. Brock Purdy? Brock Purdy's that. a little guy, man. I don't. Brock Purdy don't have a kind of arm talent. J.J. McCarthy is a stud. Damn, mm -hmm. Walt says uh, J.J. Tommy Maddox. <laughs> He's not wrong. Tommy yeah. Maddox. Tommy Maddox was a stud, bro. No, I'm not saying he wasn't. I'm just saying Tommy Maddox was that's a, a stud, name, bro. bro. The only us, would, you know, like yeah, yeah. oh yeah, Tommy Maddox. You remember when they were trying to run Elway out of town for Tommy yep. Maddox? Yep, unbelievable, yep. man. They were trying to run. He just got drafted in a bad situation, bro. Like you don't want to get drafted and 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 be the heir apparent to John Elway, who was currently in his prime. Yeah, like he was still in his prime, bro. They they still had the orange unis. Back yeah. then, yeah, when they drafted Tommy Maddox, the orange and the blue, the orange crush. Oh my god, that was a name, that's that, a, work. A, a name that keeps falling wasted. I want to ask you, where do you think Bo Nix falls? What, where I do you think he's going to Denver, man? I, I think you've been Bo saying Nicks, that, you've been saying that, yo, because he reminds me the most of Drew Brees. He's a guy who who's accurate, intermediate throws, he processes well, he's been in a pro style offense. Size he, isn't the same by any means, but I know what you mean. Yeah, but but I think with Sean Payton, I think Sean Payton looks at Bo Nix and says, this is my guy. Because Sean Payton is trying to run his his offense. Yeah. He's going to get the guy that's closest to Breeze. I think out of he's look, he's not as accurate as Breeze, but as if you look at what he does well, he does a lot of the things that Breeze did well. So, uh, salute to Jesus on a great comment, man. Salute to Payton. May will be better than Herbert. I like Rattler as a realistic option. Salute to Peyton, man. I'm talking about man, Drake May, y'all. I'm telling you. And, and all, all this 
talk of his you know his stock dropping it's only gonna make him even more mad man i'm telling you do not look at the whole north carolina thing and assume he's mitchell trubisky and all that other shit drake may is a dog if he goes to the right situation he can be a baller keep an eye on minnesota keep an eye on denver also if he falls and they trade up but he will be a great talent at the next level salute to og uh, Docs, do you see James Williams from Miami? He might move to linebacker. You can get him in the late rounds. We looked at him the other uh, other day, OG. Me and um, me and me and Stewart. You know, you guys mentioned him when we did that show, and I actually looked at him a little bit. I didn't get a chance to do my full length breakdown on him, but a safety out of Miami. Keep an eye on him. I uh, wasted a guy that once again, you know, a lot of these guys like Devon Diablo, like Tanner Muse, getting converted to linebacker. I don't see that though, OG. I think they keep him at safety. They're gonna keep him at safety. I, I've been watching him. For, for a while. You know what I'm saying? I think he stays at safety, man. I, I think a lot of people don't realize some of these bigger guys that are safeties, these these young kids can move, man. Yeah. They can move a lot better than you think. I just think sometimes with the scheme that they're in and this position they're put in, you just see them coming downfield all the time. That that kid is a lot better than people think as far as getting his hips around. Let me see. But, but, but guys, look, I, I, when, when, when I look at all of this stuff, you look at these quarterbacks, it really doesn't matter who you compare them to. The the thing is the situation that they get put into is the most important thing. That's the most important thing with a lot of these quarterbacks. It's not, you know, like with, with Drake May. I think Drake May, if I'm drafting Drake May and I got a vet there, I like Drake May. Yeah. Do I want to put the franchise on Drake May's shoulder playing the level, of, like playing how he played in college? Not really. Mm -hmm. Drake May, I don't see him being a guy that I can take and put him and put the organization on his shoulders year one. Yeah. I see him having him sitting and being better in that way. I think that's you would benefit a lot more sitting, definitely. Yeah. But I do believe I think that's the way he'll be successful. I think he's going to get overdrafted, and that's why I don't think he's going to be successful. Salute to Spivey, man. My dog. Appreciate you on Gifting 5 OLV Raider Network memberships. I appreciate you, brother, as always. Salute to one of the GOATs, the Kevin Nash of Shieldmore. Salute to Rudy, the vet Russo. Let's unceremoniously block Mitch. Blocked. <laughs> it's like, nah, man. Listen, y'all. Listen, listen, y'all. I this is the one thing that I don't want to happen anymore. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, hey, hey. Just just keep that same energy, Wasted. What? What do you mean? Keep that same energy. Look, what energy? What 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 Mitch? What hey, you talking about? Look, I don't want nobody talking bad about Mitch. Mitch ain't doing Mitch. Mitch do his show. Mitch does a great job down there. Oh, we don't God. do the same thing that Mitch does, though. Uh-uh. Keep that same energy, bro. Keep that same energy. What the f you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Just, just keep that same energy, man. Keep that same energy with Mitch, bro. Just keep what, that same energy. What, what, what you mean? Keep everybody in chat, man. Keep, keep that same energy, man. Keep, keep that same energy. Nah, leave, leave Mitch alone, bro. Keep, keep, keep that, keep that same energy. Keep that same energy. That's all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. You got, you got to text me on that one, yo. Keep that same energy. Well, you say I, for me to keep this, I, I'm definitely keeping my energy. What the f you talking about? Hey, 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 look, man, look, y'all, y'all will see in due time. Just keep that same energy. Salute to Peyton. I can see the Pats liking a guy like Knicks and trading up out of the top. Only one can hope. Salute to Peyton. I would oh, love nah, that. Don't be scared for me. Listen, wasted is always fine. I would love that. I would love that. I would love that. Pats move out. We move right in. Go get our guy. Hey, man, Mark Davis, man. I, I, I'm trying to tell people, man, keep that same energy wasted bang <laughs> yeah i don't know what the f you talking about right now what energy are we talking about here what are we talking about you will you will in due time brother you will and, and, and i'm gonna put you up on game you, you, you'll see you'll see here very shortly uh what i'm talking about man um you know mitch he texted me something interesting that's all i'm gonna say just keep that same energy man <laughs> keep that same energy man whatever <laughs> Look at the two thousand people in the building, y'all. Right? Everybody went. Listen, man. F F every single. Listen. F every single one of y'all that's saying oh, that okay. I'm scared. Wasted on scared them. Oh, this mother. What's up? In here. What's up? Keep that, that F, same energy. That man. F are you doing in here? <laughs> I, had to, I had to bring this age gap under the age of 40. So it was, y'all were looking old and tired. Shut that up. All up. right. Man, bro, look, I'm, I'm over here looking out for you. going to call me old and tired? Shit. This mother you effort are, talking about some keep club that now. same energy. Like somebody's scared of fucking Howdy Doody up in here. <laughs> just going Shit, up. I wish I was Howdy Doody. I'd be making a bank. That's funny. What's up, brother? What's up, guys? No, I saw you guys uh, 
talking it up. And I was like, ah, I got to make a video anyway. So I was, I was hearing y'all talk about Aiden and I was just like, my ears peaked up kind of like when I tell Chuck treat. So I was like, all right, let's go. Let's get so, it. So, so Mitch, like in all seriousness, bro, look, yeah. I understand you don't like Aiden O'Connor, but don't say he's a, a, a no, the, it's not the, that the I 30s. don't like Aiden O'Connell. I think a I know what Aiden is and I've accepted what Aiden is. Like Aiden is, you know, the epitome of chicken, I think without a lot of seasoning, like, yeah, you can get your protein in like, yeah, he can be a quarterback, but do I really want to eat that every single day? No, no, I do not. Right. Like he's, hey, a Han he's, he's a reliable, like he's going to be a good backup. I think he's going to be a backup. What if he had a career like Brian Hoyer, 15 years in the NFL. I mean, that's millions upon millions of dollars. And, that's a very good NFL career, but like, you know, he's going to be a spot starter. Maybe I, I just do not view the realistic possibility of you winning a Super Bowl with Aiden O'Connell well, because well, of that. That's I, I think Mitch, we can, we can say this though, right? If we had to lean towards which would happen, I think we can all agree that we would have to lean on Aiden, not having this, this Super Bowl type career. I mean, realistically i mean but i mean anyone that's saying oh he's going to be the guy to take us to the promised land you you, you kind of thinking outside the box here he's a fourth round pick there's a reason why he was there you know what i'm saying and, and he had some troubles his rookie year but you know i i still with better coaching mitch you know you know what happens man if you get the right guys around you that can unlock that full potential you just never know absolutely you never know I, th this Listen, is I, this is my thing though mitch and i mean it to cut you off bitch how could you say that your show you're good <laughs> how, how could you say that based off of you're not seeing another year. You're not seeing him in preseason this year. You're not seeing him with a full camp with, with, with a real chance at starting. He never had a chance at starting last year. They never prepared him from that prism. So we don't know. We don't know. You can't just arbitrarily just broad brush him and say, oh, he's a bust. He's never going to start. You can't say that. Because some people might have said that about Brock Purdy. You're, you're, you're not wrong. I will say like. I'm 100% right. <laughs> there's times where you just got to trust your gut, right? Like people were saying like, oh, Mitch, you're crazy for not thinking that Josh McDaniels isn't going to work. It was just, it was in my gut feeling, right? It's same thing with like Derek Carr, where I know Derek can be a good quarterback, but in my gut of guts, I don't think that he's going to be the guy that gets you to the Super Bowl. And can Aiden potentially develop into being a, a good, reliable quarterback? Sure they can. My point was, I didn't want to settle on that. To me, Aiden seems like a settling job when you got a brand new head coach, you got a brand new GM. I just wanted to shoot for the moon. I wanted to shoot for the stars. Like, I, I don't want the Raiders to take a Bo Nix. Like, if you told me start Aiden O'Connell or take Bo Nix at 13, I'm going to start AFC. Aiden. Yep. If you yep. got to tell me, do I want to roll with Michael Penix Jr. at pick 13 or Aiden O'Connell, I'm going to roll with Michael Penix Jr., right? Like, Spencer mm -hmm. Rattler, even in round two, which is yeah. a lot higher than I would like to take him. I take Spencer Rattler in round two over Aiden O'Connell. To me, it's just, I don't want to settle, right? Like I just, that's it. I don't want to settle. Now, if you're telling me we're going to continue to do what we're doing in free agency, like I think they're doing the right things in free agency. I think we got one of the best defensive lines in the all of NFL. Agreed. Building a hell of a roster around them. And if the plan is to just, we're going to go with Gardner Minshew in year one and then maybe hand the keys to somebody else in year two, that can be the route. Like, well, I think well, Gardner beats out Aiden, but if Aiden ends up winning it, then give him the keys. You know, realistically, Mitch, right now you're the GM. League starts tomorrow. Who's on our roster at the quarterback position, and who's starting going in a, into the 2024 season? So you're saying like the draft's already right? passed us right now? Like you're the GM, right? And and if, if I'm the GM, you paid Gardner Minshew two years, twenty five, and. It is a little bit of an overpay, but the way I've kind of looked at Gardner Minshew is I've looked at it as car insurance, you know, life insurance. You look at yeah. it as house insurance, renting insurance. Yeah. You hope that you never got to use it. But if you do got to use it, then, you know, you might have to overpay for it a little bit. I would start Gardner Minshew at QB. Like, yeah. Guys, I, I'm going to think... tell you guys why you're wrong. I'm going <laughs> to tell you why you're wrong. One, okay. wh why, why? We already know what Gardner Minshew could be in the National Football League. We don't know what Aiden O'Connell is going to be. Now, for you guys I saying, with you. so by you saying that you're settling, you're not settling. The reality of it is, is that Aiden O'Connell's on your roster, and the people that you want to be on your roster are not an option for you. Like, bro, you, 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 you know. Listen, I might want to be seven foot two and be in the National Football League, but not not National Football League, but seven foot two being the NBA. But that's not the reality of it. The reality sure. is the Raiders can't get into the top three. It doesn't matter what they do. Those teams that are slotted in the top three are taking quarterbacks and they got their guys that they think are going to take them to the promised land. And they're not going to okay. trade places with us, bro. 
Like you, you guys are acting like there was a, a free agent acquisition out there that was going to take us to the promised land. Wait, 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 who said that? Not you. I'm talking about people who say we'll shoot I mean, for the I stars. Said that, oh. Like I would have said, Russell Wilson was an upgrade over Aiden O'Connell. I mean, Russell Wilson at one point two one million dollars. Agree. That's been something that I've talked about for a while. I don't want Russell. But I think sometimes, you know, you got to look at it from an actual business perspective of he's a better quarterback than Aiden. But like everything you're saying with like you want to be seven two, I I want to I want to be a starting wide receiver in the National Football League. Like to me, it's not happening. And I'm sorry. Like I know some people have that hope for Aiden. I don't have that hope. Like I have the exact same feeling about Aiden O'Connell the way that I did. Like I knew Josh McDaniels was never going to work. And in my mind, like it was a waste of time in my mind. I feel like Aiden O'Connell is never going to make it work as a legitimate starting quarterback in the NFL. Some people have a disagreement. That's fine. But because I think like that, I don't want to waste the time in going that route, which is why, to me, the Raiders with Gardner Minshew can win 10 games with a defense. You, to me, you just got to get in. Maybe Mitch, they can win 10 games it, it, with Aiden, look, look, too. You know what the thing is? That's possible. But the thing that I like is I love – the competition aspect of it. I just want competition. I don't want to just give the, the the job to AOC. But this is the problem that I'm having. I appreciate with your you, bro. School of thought, yo. The problem I'm having with your school of thought is, is you you sit up here and you guys say you know Russell Wilson, right? I was the first guy that that brought. I was bringing the Russell Wilson caveat up in the middle of the fucking season, and then the very same people that were like, no, he's terrible. When people thought there was a chance we can move into the, oh, he's terrible. And I, and I, I said from the beginning, people do not allow that need a quarterback you to trade into the top three. Most of the time when people trade into the top three, they are, and I'm going to give you an example, like with the Chicago Bears last year, they were still farming out the Justin Fields experiment. Okay. And that's why they were allowed, they allowed Carolina to trade in there. There's no one else in the top three who was going to do that? And, and New England was the only team that I thought maybe if they keep Mac Jones, maybe. But when they didn't, I saw already right there. Yo, you can't get into the top three. So let's not even farm. People were killing me for the for the the, the Russell Wilson shit. And Graf would tell you, bro, yeah, in yeah. the middle of the season, I, I didn't want Russell Wilson. They were killing me for that. But 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 for that price tag, I was like, oh yeah, just like what Mitch said. I thought it was an upgrade over what we have already. And I did too. But this yeah. is the problem with that. If you look at this man as a one read quarterback, right, who at one time used to get out of trouble with his legs, he doesn't, he's not as good with that anymore. I don't know if, if, if they can catch lightning in a bottle with Russell Wilson, but at this point in Russell Wilson's career, he is what he's always been a one read quarterback who either takes off and runs. That's what he did in Seattle for years, right? Sure. We're not trying to, we, we with, with the kind of team that we have. We're not trying to operate under that construct. We are a defense-led team. So we want a quarterback that's going to take care of the football, who's going to get you first downs, and people talk about getting your guy. Is that Aiden? What, what, what? I'm, I'm talking about Aiden O'Connell. Aiden O'Connell's the guy that's going to get you first downs and, and take care of the football, right? Aiden. Gardner Minshew is a guy who, you know, hopefully can push Aiden O'Connell, right? But if you don't have Aiden O'Connell, then I, I would take my chances – with drafting the quarterback that's going to fall to me that I'm comfortable with. Hey, and I think that's Michael Penix Jr. So, oh, I, I agree. Penix has been the guy, the most realistic. The most. Yeah, I've been saying that from the beginning, bro. All of this Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels shit is, is, is out the window for me. It's fun to talk about because, you know, if it, you know, you never know. You see crazy things happen in the NFL every year. But it's definitely fun to talk about. And we know the ties with Jaden Daniels and AP. So it makes sense that the, the nation is excited about the, the idea of it happening, but I think the most realistic thing. So the Ten Commandments, Mitch, knowing that you're not getting your guy, what would you do to support the existing QBs? I think it, I think I still don't think that that's right true though yet. Like again, I'm I'm gonna hold out hope that until that moment actually happens, like you don't know. Like to me, if I'm gonna rank my quarterbacks, I still want to try to get one of those top guys in the draft. I know you say it's not possible, but until like that fat lady singing and until I hear it's yeah. a zero percent chance. Right, like to me, us getting Jaden Daniels in the draft is as likely as Devontae Adams trade, Khalil Mack trade, things that people say are never going to happen, but it's the mm -hmm. NFL. Sometimes crazy shit just happens. So, like, I'm going to hold out hope for that. But I'll tell you right now, I'll take Michael Penix Jr. at 13 over starting Gardner Minshew, Aiden O'Connell every single day of the week. I'll admit, I am a little bit worried because our right side of our line, you know, could you potentially convince Colton Miller to? 
you know, kick over to the side if you don't have that opportunity. Like, do I want a Talisi Fuaga? Do I want a Terry and Arnold? Like, these are players that I would love to target at 13. My fear is, though, what I don't want, like, I don't want a Bo Nix at 13. No. I don't want a J.J. McCarthy in the top 13 picks. Like, I do. perfect scenario, you get, you you draft, like, Terry and Arnold in, in Brown or a pick 13 or a Talisi Fuaga at pick 13, and then you trade back up into the back end of round one or if Penix is somehow available to you at pick 44, like, yeah. If I got to pick between JJ, Michael Penix, or Bo, Bo Nix, even Spencer Rather, I take Penix every single day of the week. Yeah. I just like this whole like not knowing if you're going to get your guy. I'm not willing to just say, all right, it's not going to happen because what, what, what's your, what's your I, knock I, on? the Vikings are going to trade up for Drake May. I mean, we got a guy I, I here at too. Minnesota. And yeah. That's, that's the guy they like. What, what, what's your knock on JJ? Because, I, and I, I, the same thing I, I told Hondo, he was there actually, and I talked to Wasted. I called you. I, I, he was the big talk. At the combine, what, what what is your knock on JJ McCarthy at this point? I think he's a really good athlete, right? And the way that I kind of look at JJ's game, I heard you guys earlier talking about NFL comps, and I look at JJ McCarthy as being like a quarterback that's less of a passer than Trevor Lawrence, somebody that's probably going to have to use their legs a lot more than what they need to at the NFL level. My thing that scares me the most with JJ is his inability to make like the loft throw. I feel like all of his throws are the exact same, whether it's 20 yards down the field, 30 yards down the field. It's always like a, a line drive. Like there's never like a lot of loft on it. Like there are some anticip anticipation throws there, but it's also just a, a sample size. Like my big knock on Trey Lance was there wasn't enough NFL caliber throws that I could see that I was confident enough to take a quarterback in the top 13. Same thing with J.J. Like, I also don't think McCarthy's ready to start in year one. Now, if you put him in a Jordan Love type of situation and every situation is different, yeah. like, J.J. McCarthy can be a round one pick for some teams. I don't think J.J. McCarthy can be a round one pick for the Las Vegas Raiders because, to me, he needs two years to be able to mature and to be able to develop more of that game. He's a great leader. Like, I know that, and that's something that, you know, I think is very important at the NFL level. Yeah, yeah. But for the Raiders, I think it's that's where I'm not sold on JJ McCarthy. Okay. Salute to Will Duncan on the five dollar donation. Also, right. like he's a he's a he's a fat. This is the analogy I always make on my show. He's a pitcher in the MLB that throws 94 miles an hour with bad off speed stuff. Ooh. Look, the, the thing with JJ McCarthy, JJ McCarthy is accurate. JJ McCarthy has a strong arm. He makes pro throws. He has pro size. Um, great feet. Great vision. He sees the whole field. Thing with JJ McCarthy that I don't like, and and it's not his fault, is the fact that he played under Jim Harbaugh. And when you look at Jim Harbaugh and you look at the way that pro style offense is that he runs, that that is a very archaic offense. If you look at how much Alex Smith threw when he had him in San Francisco, you look at how much <laughs> Alan Kaepernick threw. They don't throw the ball a whole lot. He doesn't have a lot of attempts, bro. And that's the reason why you're looking at it from that prison. Now there are some games that I look at and I'm like, ah, JJ, you, you probably should have thrown more. But if you only have, you know, 15, 16 attempts, that's how you can have teams. Because Michigan had games where they were blowing people out and JJ would have 200 yards and, you know, he'd only have 13, 14, 15 attempts. And I think that's more of the symptom of why his numbers look the way they do. Salute to see Gabe go to the three horsemen of Raider Equinox is upon us. Salute Docs wasted to Mitch. Only real leather around here. Salute to my guy. And Verum, this one's, I, I like this because – you know, I'd rather Mitch can get a little a little emotional. I see him, I see him tweet, I see him tweet away during games and saying some outlandish shit sometimes. And, and you know, as fans, we, sometimes we get we, we get in that emotional bag, right? Where we say some wild shit. Mitch at the beginning of the season, you said to bench JG, which I think a lot of us agree with for AOC. Then after three games at AOC, you said he will never be a starter. Can we get some middle ground? Give it give AOC a fair chance. I mean, I don't I did say bench him for Jimmy Garoppolo, and I thought Aiden O'Connell gave us the best chance to win last season, but that's yeah. not me saying that Aiden's a starter. That's me saying, have you seen what Jimmy Garoppolo and Brian Hoyer look like? I mean, the fact that those guys yeah. Yeah. started NFL games last season is, you know, it's, it's a mind blowing thing to me. Right. And I trust my eyes. I trust my gut. Right. Like it's to me, the Aiden O'Connell conversation is I, I just, you're not going to be able to convince me yeah. that he's going to be a good starting quarterback in the NFL. Like, you're just not going to be able to convince me. Now, if he goes out there and he does his thing, sure. I also want somebody, though, that I can rely on at the biggest moments. Like, I can rely on, you know, these, like, big-time things. Sorry, Alex just texted me something crazy. No, you're good, bro. You're good. Take your time, man. 
Salute Mitch, everybody here in the building. Text you that you're a jabroni. No, she was like, "Is Chuck with you?" And I was like, "No." Uh, so I was like, "Where the frick is he?" Um, <laughs> but again, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just not going to view AOC. Sometimes you got to trust your gut. Sometimes you just got to go that way. Just everyone said that Antonio Pierce is going to be the right head coach. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to trust your gut. And I just, just I don't see it with Aiden. Let's get off the quarterback shit. I want to ask you, man. Brody. You know, because we'll be on, we'll be on for another few minutes before we get out of here. I want to ask Mitch. Moving forward, free agency. You know, we already. Brought back Big John, brought back Adam Butler, went and got Christian Wilkins, the big fish in free agency, went and signed our, our backup tight end, Harrison Bryant, which I thought was an under the radar kind of signing for us. Um, you know, picked up Andre James, brought him back as center. What is the next move you do in free agency if you're Tom Telesco? Are you looking at a, a veteran corner to bring in? Are you looking at beefing up that right side? How are you, how are you moving in free agency moving forward? Well, based off of what I would do, uh, it might be a little bit different than what I've like heard and, you know, out there. I know the Raiders brought back Andre James, which, you know, I think it's hilarious just because of what we were told at, at, at media day. Um, yeah. And I, I know your ties with some of those guys out there. So I know, uh, I, mean, I know, I know actually where you got it from that. That's actually the funny part of this shit. It's like, yeah, everybody's uh, like, Mitch, you're wrong. You're wrong. Well, sometimes yeah. you actually hear it from the horses. I'll tell you that, I'm happy. I was wrong on that one. I'm happy. Andre came back, but uh, from what I understand, they like their Munford a lot. They want to give him a shot on the right side. Uh -huh. um, this is another thing where if you draft Penix, there's a part of me that wonders, like, could you kick Thayer over to the left side where I actually thought he looked a lot more natural last season. And then you put Colton on the right side at right tackle and yeah, Colt might not want to be that, but if you restructure his contract and say, Hey, like you can protect the blind side. I would rather that personally than having Thayer protect Penix's blind side. But then uh, I'm going to look at corner. The corner that makes sense to me is Adoree Jackson. He's been the name that I'll just continue to throw out there. Yeah. I know Antonio Pierce said that finding a cornerback one is a priority, but to me, Adoree isn't like the the number one corner, right? Like he's just the – he's a replacement, and that's – he's a replacement probably of – Probably of a meek, right? Like you're just trying to find another guy there. I don't know if Jacorian's going to be ready to step up right away, but you put a Dory Jackson in that situation, and then you can still go out and get a Terry and Arnold or somebody like that in the draft, uh, a Quinion Mitchell. Uh, Nate Wiggins, I like. He might be a better corner. I don't know if he's physical enough. Maybe a rake straw out of Missouri could be another name to at least just sneaky, throw out there and keep in name. mind. But yes, yeah, another I, I would look at a Dory who had his best year in 2021 with, with Patrick Graham. Yeah. Okay. What, what about a Darnay Holmes, another guy, young, 25? Has that connection, um, you know, to AP. I believe he played on his AAU team back in the day with like Keyshawn, uh, but Keyshawn Johnson, but a guy that hasn't really been able to unlock his full potential out there in New York, didn't really get a ton of opportunity. I'm just saying this could be a guy that you could potentially add as a depth piece for that corner room as well. You know what I mean? I, I know it's not the sexiest name, but it's someone that has ties to AP. And we already know. I think AP, like, you don't always have to go get the sexy name, right? Like I've said yeah. it a hundred times, and you kind of did earlier with Harrison Bryant. That's not a sexy name. That's a really good football move, right? Like that's yeah. a physical guy that you're going to be able to add in to fit the Luke Getzey offense pretty damn well. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 to me, I still got to add maybe an interior guard. Like, I don't even think bringing back Greg Van Roten's a bad idea. Make him your sixth man on your offensive line, right? Like, put him, Great. put him somewhere. Even, even going out finding a left guard. And if Parham's got to play right guard, which kind of like what I said about Munford, there's a the times where I'm like, I wonder if Parham would be better on the right side, right? Well, Parham, like, Parham with, that's, that's his original him. position, I believe, at, at a Memphis. He played Parham, a lot of right guard. At Memphis, Parham played like, he played three different positions, like at three years at Memphis, and yeah. then he ended up playing center at the Senior Bowl. Like Barham yeah. can play a lot of different spots. Yeah, but I'm not against it. We were just talking about the how waste about bringing back Greg Van Ryden. It's just like that rotational guy at the guard yeah. position. Uh, salute to Joe as well, man. Gifting five OLV Raider Network memberships. Appreciate you, brother. As always, salute to my guy Joe. Uh, salute to Xavier. Says Mitch, if Aiden starts and wins ten games, go bald. <laughs> I'd be if 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 Aiden starts, we win ten games and go to the playoffs. That's a win to me. But that still that still doesn't mean that he was the right answer. Like that's a good outcome. But my point is, I think with as good of a defense as the Raiders are going to have this season, like if the Raiders won eight games last season with Aiden and all that other quarterback bullshit, I expect them to win ten games this year with Aiden with Gardner Minshew and. You know, even look at that Colts team last season. That Colts team last season on paper was one of the worst teams in the NFL. I think Gardner did a, a pretty damn good job for getting them to where he was. Like, I expect the Raiders to win 10 games with arguably a top five defense. You can make the argument they're going to have an yeah. even better defense than that. Yeah. My point is, if since our defense is that level, Super Bowl caliber defense, like that's the team. I was just like, 
what if we try to get a quarterback that sets us totally apart? Yeah. And what if that QB hits? That's how you start something amazing. Like, yeah. that's how you start something like the Kansas City Chiefs have. And that's what I want. Call me crazy. Hey, hey Bruce, let, let, but everybody said that about Zeus. Not just Mitch, me, Wasted, oh, Andy, Hammer. My, my two biggest misses last year were me, me calling out Robert Spillane. I'll, I'll take the L on that one every day of the week. I didn't like that move. He proved me wrong. And then I also said, I don't think Zamir White's going to be a reliable, reliable running back in the NFL. Bro, and based but off what nobody said that. that point, everybody said that. Everybody, everybody said that. You, you, but you. This is the reason why my mind is more open to to allowing people to develop. Th this is why. Thank you, honey. Appreciate it. Yo, the the the, the, the reason why I, I like to let people develop is because yo, you you can't just throw the baby out with the bathwater with some of these guys. You got to let young players develop. The, the the problem with the Raiders. And, and Mitch, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to pull an old man wasted fireside chat. Everybody gather around while wasted warms it up right now. If you've been a Raider fan for thirty years, right? The problem that we've always had is when Al was alive. Al always thought we were a few players away from winning a Super Bowl. Always, even when we were thirty players away. When we were thirty players away, right? Okay. Yeah. I don't think at this point we are one or two players away from winning a Super Bowl. And I think we have to allow the Raiders a chance to develop this team in a real way. And you don't do that through the free agency. You do that through smart free agent moves, like Christian I, Wilkins. He's I, a young guy. His best football. I don't think he's played his best football. Bro. I don't think if, so. If you had a quarterback, which is easy to say, my bad, I mean to cut you off, but I'm just going to say this. You said we're not two players. As you always do. Thank you. I, I know. I'm a terrible person. But – if you have a quarterback, you have a true number one quarterback, you have a, and you have a number one corner, bro. This this is a team that can win the Super Bowl. What, what do you mean, bro? But see, this is the thing: is it realistic for you to say year one drafting some kid? No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm just saying if you say if realistic, the Raiders had CJ Stroud right now. Are they a Super Bowl caliber team? My answer is no. yes. No, because you still got to beat Patrick Mahomes, and I don't think our roster Everyone has to beat Patrick Mahomes. Well, that's what I'm saying. But he's in our division, though. This is the thing y'all ain't looking. You're telling at. me with CJ Stroud, the Raiders aren't a Super with CJ Bowl Stroud team. and Quinion Mitchell out there on the outside in this year. I don't know. I don't know if Quinion Mitchell could play a fucking lick in the national. Hey, football respect Quinion. Respect Quinion. Respect Quinion. No, yo, yo, Quinion Mitchell yeah. hasn't played one fucking snap. Respect Quinion, bro. Yo, yo, listen, with CJ Stroud, would it make us get to the playoffs and possibly win a game? Yeah, but if you're talking about beating Kansas City right now I can't say that because from from Who from 1 to 52 QB? from 1 to 52 their roster bro is is we we need to catch up roster wise forget the quarterback we need to catch up roster wise like like if you go every player in their defense Trent McDuffie all of these guys they're loaded on the defensive side of the football their offensive line is loaded bro but loaded they're about to oh. lose they're about to lose their one B in their corner. I think our team. How are they going to lose their one B? Is they, they, than they, their team. they put the franchise tag on them. Yeah, but well, he's, right. he's going to be a trade partner. The, the Colts have been all in on Snead up to this point. It hasn't happened yet, but there's going to be potentially a few other teams that's going to be in on Snead. I mean, Look, if you're saying we got to beat Patrick Mahomes, if if the Raiders had Josh Allen at quarterback, who can't beat Patrick Mahomes, are we a Super Bowl caliber team? Like, I don't know yet because the 49ers. When I look at the 49ers, bro, right, and I look at their roster. Their okay, roster so is so, for Patrick Mahomes. Yo, they, no, I'm not saying that, bro. Yeah. What I'm saying is, is that when you look at the 49ers, you look okay. at the Ravens, you look at teams like that, their rosters are filled out more than us. We're not there yet. Like we, we, we're. I think we're about four or five players off from being there. But, like, but, but, but bro, that, that can happen if you, if you, if you draft correctly. Look what Kansas City did. Their defense was bottom of the barrel in the NFL. And that's their my offense point. always won them games. One draft. Put them, in, put them in play to have one of the best. That's my the point, though. That's my point. You have to have draft capital to do that. And I think that this is the draft and this is the offseason that we put ourselves. I think we're a year off from being a Super Bowl contender. I really do. I think this draft, if they do it right and they did what they did with Christian Wilkins and they're smart with the cap, I think this is the year, bro. That's why I'm not. That's why. That's why I'm not willing to give up three or four first round picks for a quarterback. I'm not sure it's going to be. Wait, this is the thing that's that. Okay. Now let me, let me, let me fire back. Because a little you're bit. not sure in the QB then, I but, but, but all, no, the court, I get that. It, it, look, we can go to quarterback. We can end this discussion. I get it, but I'm saying we have to get a lot out of our third year players, right? 
We have to get a lot out of our second year guys this year and Michael Mayer. We got to hope that Zeus becomes that guy at the running back position with, with a rookie probably next to him. If, if these guys can translate in year two, in year three, the, the Nate Hobbs of the world, if he can become that guy that we all assume he can be at, in the slot, if Jack Jones can make that, you know, turn that corner and become that guy that we think that if he just continues to build on what he did last year, I think that you're kind of, you kind of beat up. You, you, point for me. you just made my point for me. All them fucking ifs. We don't know that yet. This year will be the test if all of these guys that we got in the building are the guys that we think they are. We got we to gotta hope that Zamir White plays up to the level he played at the end of the season. We got to hope that Jack Jones continues to play up to who we thought he was last year. We got to hope that Thayer Mumford takes that next step. There's a lot of ifs, bro. No, no, definitely. So, definitely. That's the year. Yeah, there's always going to be ifs. Yeah, but it's but different also- with other teams where you look at their roster. There's not a whole lot of question marks on a Ravens roster, bro. You know what you're getting there. You know, there's not a whole lot of question. The NFL MVP, right? Like, yeah, yeah, but, 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 bro, I'm talking about coaching, the other guys. All that stars, all coaching, c- c- continuity. Harbaugh's been how much better the Raiders defense got this past season just in the second year of Graham. Like, I'm I'm expecting Merrick to take another I am step too. forward. Epps another year forward. Hobbs Mitch, another year forward. Jack Jones another step forward. Mitch, my my point is that I'm expecting it, but do I know that to be true? No, and that's what I'm trying to tell you. We don't know, so you can't tell me that we're just a quarterback away because you don't know if any of these guys are going to be any good this year. We need a, more of a sample size with a lot more of these guys. Okay, I need more of a sample size of AOC. I need more of a sample size of Zeus. I hear you. Let's get these supers real quick, but I'm going to say this. The ifs are always a thing in the NFL. What if the Kansas City uh, Chiefs just fall off the globe this year? You never know. It's, it's not is, is, that, is that likely a, a dynasty? It's not likely. Hey, right? As long well, as hey, Patrick they, Mahomes is that quarterback, that ain't that's happening. Why I Andy reads that, Andy Reed's that coach, that ain't happening. We got question marks from our head coach down. That's the thing, bro. We don't know that a- AP is going to be great this year. Do, do I have a lot of optimism? Yeah. No, I, I have know hope that, if, but I, I'm just saying, bro, we watched the Niners. I'm going to sit up here in the air and say that. I agree. I that we do we watched well. the Texans be one of the worst teams in the NFL go to the playoffs. We watched the Niners be the second worst team in the NFL and go to the Super Bowl. It happens. We just don't know. Yes, if, 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 if it was a fifth, we all be drunk. All I'm saying is we've seen stranger things happen in the NFL. Salute to Tech Mammoth. Mitch, have you ever had any news on McCall, Fluker, or Wagner? Mumford All American at guard at Ohio State. Any 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 information you have on those guys, or, or just any thoughts on those guys? Uh, Marquan McCall is a mountain of a human being. Yes. Luker, I actually think that they ended up bringing him back, or mm-hmm. they're going to bring him back. And yeah. Then, One more year in his uh, deal. What was the last name? The last name on there. Uh, Don Wagner, uh, the big guy, the Arkansas right tackle. Oh, I love Wagner. He's a he's a giant dude. But I'm curious to see where he ends up fitting now that Brasillo left. Oh yeah, that's. That's interesting too. Salute the heat check. Go, go ahead, Wason. My bad. Guys, I don't I don't know that with Dalton Wagner, we haven't seen him play one snap in the NFL. Yep. How do we love this guy? The, but, I, I, I love the idea yeah. of what he could be. The measurables. I mean, brother, and, and the dude was like in like the WWE and shit. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who, like, who's they, you know, you gotta love yeah. the dude. <laughs> yeah, I like I like guys like that. It's kind of like the way that I view players now in the defense. I trust Rob Leonard so much that when they bring in somebody on the D line, I'm like, all right, you've earned my trust, you've earned yeah, my respect. Yeah. Antonio yeah, Pierce, Patrick Graham. Same thing with Carmen Rasillo on the offensive line. I thought he always did a good job, and he always looked for those big project players. And if Carmen Rasillo was like, all right, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Win me over. But but you're right though. We're we're probably going to get away from that scheme that we ran last year with Carmen Brasillo. And, and and we don't know if Wagner fits what they're trying to do on the offensive line. Salute to heat check. No way you look Devontae and Adams in the eye and tell him Gardner Minshew is slinging a rock to win this season, right? I mean, heat check. Look, man, this is the thing that people – we look at all these guys. Look at the Hopkins of the world. Look at Tim Brown forever, forever. Like, like bro, Devontae has already had his time with an all-pro quarterback in the NFL and, 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 and a first ballot Hall of Famer in Aaron Rodgers. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm I'm the only person. Maybe I'm I'm one of the only people. I don't feel sorry for Devontae Adams. I don't either. Throw him the ball. I don't care if Abel Collins throw him the ball. In the next two years, he'll be. Man, he 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 decided to come here. He forced his way here. You 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 left one of the five best quarterbacks in the last twenty years. Voluntarily, with Derek Carr. Sorry for him. Yeah, get the fuck out of here, man. So what? He'll be all right. Look to El Chido. What do you guys think about trading back and grabbing pennies? I think we all kind of talked about that and agreed on it. I'm hoping someone like Kool Aid or TJ Tampa falls to us in a second. I would definitely take a look at TJ Tampa and Kool Aid with the foot injury kind of scares me. But if he's available there in the second round, 
I'm not I'm not against looking at the young kid out of Alabama. Salute to El Cheeto. Salute to Verum. Hard to believe hard to blame AOC as a first year uh, plus OC that never called plays in the NFL. What QB could win in that position? Mahomes sat for a year uh, and, and had Andy. This is facts, Verum. This is facts. Salute to you. Salute to Joe once again on five more. Don't man, my God, man. Right. Salute to all the new members over at Wasted Talents channel. We appreciate you, brother, as always. Uh, let me see. Cowtown, yes, I have watched Queen Yah Mitchell's tape. I have. You know what I mean? The thing is this. Not a lot of it is sexy tape. He just makes plays. You know what I'm saying? I understand, like, like the competition may not have been there in the MAC, but, bro, he did what he was supposed to do. Some of those plays, I'm going to be real with you. There were some plays, some of those picks that he came up with were gimmies. Right to him. Boop. You know what I mean? But he dominated. You have to make the play. Quinion Mitchell's tape to me reminds me of when you watch a guy in high school and he's clearly different and I get the level yeah. of competition and yeah. then you're like, all right, well, let's see how they do in college. But when you stand out that much, especially at, I think of the hardest position to play in the NFL, which is corner. Um, when, when you stand out on tape like that, I'm intrigued. I took Quinion Mitchell in a third round mock back in January and he's just, but everywhere he goes, senior bowl balls out like at the combine looked very very good there's just some guys where you're gonna he's like he's like john morant to me like yeah. honestly like john yeah. played in a small school didn't get a lot of opportunities people watch and they're like holy shit that guy's different that's quinian mitchell to me and he like you killed the senior bowl and, and, and punchy this i don't look i love Stu. i don't mean and i know we play at the nfl level and i respect my brother but at the end of the day i don't give a shit what he says about quinian mitchell i know what i see and he was the best corner at the Senior Bowl. And once again, we had this conversation with Chuck Pagano the other day, Mitch. We had a conversation, and he was saying, like, Senior Bowl means a lot because you're playing against some of the top talent in the nation. Yeah, like, man. Combine, eh. He was like, whatever. Combine doesn't mean shit to people. And this is Chuck Pagano, like a legend in the NFL, saying the Senior Bowl matters. And that was a guy that absolutely destroyed the Senior Bowl at the corner. He was clear-cut the best corner. Are you coachable? Bro, bro this me, is the like thing. This is the thing that you guys are missing, right? He is a guy who is regarded as a freak at, at the corner position. These are the most athletic guys yes. on any NFL roster, corners. Corners are most likely, most of the time, your corner is the most athletic guy on the team. He yes. he, he he made a list of, um you know, the 46 freaks in the draft. He bench pressed 225, like, I think, like 21, 23 times. The yes. dude runs a, a sub 4 three forty. Bro. Big kid, man. They don't care about that. Wasted. They they see Toledo. What what, what do we see with Tariq Woolen that year coming out of that small school? Bro, he like, he's gonna be a he's gonna be a dog. You know what I mean? Yo, so he has he has exceptional field vision, bro. Yes. And he's played in a zone concept, and that's why a lot of times you guys say, "Well, those interceptions were gimme." No, that's film study. That's going out there in that zone and putting yourself in the right position to make that play. Yo, Quinion Mitchell, listen. I'm going to give Graphic his, his credit. He put me up on, bro. And I went and I did a deep dive into him, bro. The dude, the dude, yes. listen, get the F out of here. <laughs> Is that right? Yo. But I, I went and I did a deep dive, right? And I'm telling you right now, when I compare him to other guys that I've seen play this game over the last 20 years, he's right at the top end as far as an athlete that I've seen, bro. Trust me, buy into the hype, bro. Hey, you salute to everybody. Do. You got you got about five more minutes on you, Mitch? Yeah. yeah I'm Let's good. get a few more comments in, man. Um, MB, we already answered this, brother. We're definitely down to move back into the first to get Michael Penix Jr. if he's available. Salute to my guy, East Coast, too. TJ is mad good. Yes, TJ Tampa is a dog out of Iowa, bro. That, definitely one of those, one of those, the, one of the best DBs in this class. Salute to my guy, uh, Gridiron, man. Salute to Hug. He said, y'all did work today. Salute to my guy, man. And let me get these uh, rest of these supers in real quick. Salute to Ten Commandments. I saw a stat. Then we were last in the league as far as wide receiver speed. Mitch, what is your opinion of our team speed, especially at the wide receiver position? All right, so I've kind of talked about this before, and it's kind of why I've thrown out the idea of potentially, like, the Raiders, if they wanted to trade up into the top three, Jacoby Myers could potentially be a trade chip because the Patriots, I thought all these other teams at the time, could potentially use a receiver. And if they were trying to go with a lot more speed on the outside, could you potentially move on? from a guy like Jacoby Myers. But yes, we don't have a lot of speed, but the other thing Jacoby brings is like, I think that dog mentality is a great blocker. And yeah. you have Devontae, you have Jacoby. You use Trey Tucker um, as your speed. Yes, you moved on from Renfro. If you want to add more speed, the receiver that I personally would target is Quez Watkins. 
He's got legit four three speed out of Philly. You don't got to pay him a lot of money to do it, but uh, yeah. I love our receiver core. It's probably the position that I'm the most sold on. Yeah. Or you can look at the kid. Quick question. We got the kid out of Virginia too in the later rounds. Speedster. Malik Washington. Malik Washington. He could add. He could add that uh, some more speed to that room. And you guys don't forget about. We got DJ still on this roster. Turner's still there. I know he's that special teams ace. Yeah. You know what I mean? But smaller guy. You know he, he can still add a little bit of speed. I know he's not the fastest guy in the world. But he can still add a little speed to it. Go ahead, go ahead, Wes. My bad. Hey, Mitch, I got two questions for you, man. Um, with the linebacking core, you know what I mean? Yep. Spillane, you know, Divine Diablo taking that 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 second step. Do you think that the Raiders need to go take a swing like in the third round and add another linebacker to I that linebacker think, room? So we took we had people at the senior bowl at the combine media day, and I actually think the position that the Raiders target a lot earlier. And I said this before free agency, that the position I think they target a lot earlier than people suspect is the linebacker position. And I think what you're seeing is they address the defensive tackle spot. I don't think they're going to go DT early in the draft anymore unless Byron Murphy falls to like pick 44, right? Like something crazy like that. Yeah. But uh, they were looking at a lot of linebackers. And what I thought was interesting is, again, the coach that I think is the most valuable, you talked about the senior bowl, Rob Leonard, Raiders defensive line coach, worked with linebackers at the Senior Bowl. And one of the players that we interviewed at the Combine, and you know, I think the Combine is one of those things where everyone just says like exactly what they're supposed to say. Yeah. Chris Broswell, and I, I have the video of it, he's like an edge slash linebacker mm -hmm. type of player. He mentioned Rob Leonard by name. He was like, Rob Leonard was an unbelievable coach at the Senior Bowl. Broswell was an edge defender, so working with the defensive line, yeah. but said like Rob Leonard was helping out the linebackers and the defensive linemen. Yeah. Plus, when you look at a lot of the meetings that the Raiders had at the combine, it was like players that I see going round two, round three, and they yeah. were all athletic freaks. Like yeah. you want to talk about biggest ifs, it's Divine Diablo. I don't know if Divine Diablo, I've been sitting up here saying it's going to be the year, it's going to be year, it's going to be the year, hasn't really been the year. Uh, I, I think that they look at an Edrin Cooper, uh, a Jeremiah Trotter, a yeah. Junior Colson, a Trevor Wilson. Wallace, Junior a Colson. Peyton East. Wilson, a Chris Brossel, though he's more of an edge. Yeah, yeah. I think that they're going to add an athletic specimen in round two, round three. That's interesting that you brought that up because another another position that we may look at in the draft and, and, and no one's talking about it is safety because essentially all of our guys are on one-year deals outside of Chris Smith. All, all, yeah, all of our safeties are free agents. I'm hoping the Raiders are smart, and I think one of the reasons why they decided at the end of the day to do the post-June 1st cut for Jimmy Garoppolo is they looked at that $24 million as stash money or, like, restructure. Because if I'm the Raiders, I'm trying to make sure Nate Hobbs, Marcus Epps, Trevon Merrick, Jack Jones all get a contract restructure, or Malcolm Koontz. You can't do Jack Jones this year. You have to wait until Jack Jones yeah, yeah. Uh, next season. Yeah. But, like, Malcolm Koontz. All those guys that I just mentioned, Spillane, I'm putting them on a two-year extension trying to get them cheap, and then that way you keep Wilkins, Crosby, all those guys together in a three-year window. That's I think Koontz is going to test the market, man. Koontz is, is – I don't blame him. He should. He, he should. For, for, he's going to test the market, bro. But, but the, the rest of those guys, you can right lock now, If I, you offer Malcolm Koontz $8 million a year as a contract extension, does he take it? Yeah. Maybe. But, well, hey, I, don't, I don't know, Mitch. That's why you drafted Tyree Wilson. At the end of the day, yeah. you got a guy that you you, you, you invested heavily in. If if Malcolm Coons does walk off, you guys know I've been high on Malcolm Coons since he came out of Buffalo. I would love him to be a Remainer Raider, but you drafted his you, you drafted a replacement out of Chandler Jones from Chandler Jones. That was Tyree Wilson. And and Malcolm comes from two previous regimes ago. So at the end of the day, it is what it is. Salute to Silver and Facts. Mitch, how's those pecs feeling? Laugh out loud. Can't get any of our guys in the first round. And Rattler gets napped to uh, before us. What's next? Next year draft got anyone? I don't like next year's draft class, uh, to be honest with you. The, only, the QB that I want people to watch in next year's draft is Cam Ward. Washington State, transfer yep, to please. Miami. Transfer I'm a Cam Ward. I'm a Cam Ward truther. So that's that's my guy right now. And then the kid from Duke that just transferred up to Notre Dame, Riley, mm -hmm. I think is yep. it? I yep. like him too. I think he's a tough dude. Yeah, Notre Dame has been the place where quarterback careers go to die lately, though, man. We have not you been know, developing quarterbacks I'm well. if he man. develops well, – I mean, Telesco obviously loves Notre Dame. Yeah, I, look, I'm a big Notre Dame fan. You know what I'm saying? I always have been. We haven't developed a quarterback, man, that played well in the NFL level since freaking damn this is Joe Montana. You know what I mean? Yeah, Rick Meyer didn't pan right. out. Ron Paulus. I mean, I go back to them days. I, I, I don't know. Yo, Kevin McDougal. Hey, dog, sick. You sent me my $5 back. That shit is good as gone, King.
<laughs> Salute to Gio. Randomly met Dwayne Harris last night. Cool ass dude, man. He bought me a beer and we talked about that epic 99 yard punt return. That was against the Denver Broncos. Phenomenal, phenomenal play, man. Salute to Gio and salute to Dwayne Harris, man. We are over two hours here, you guys. I don't want to beat this yeah, show. Two hours? Yeah, man. Facts. Yeah. Salute to everybody here in the building. We appreciate you guys. As always, do me a favor, man. Wipe them feet, pay your bar tabs, hit that subscribe button. If you're not subscribed yet, man, and salute to our brother. Mitchell Rands for pulling yes, up, man. Yes, and sir. Shit with us for about a good hour. Man, Appreciate I you. I want to tell you you're a jabroni and you don't know football. F you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yo. Funny enough, you were not going to be the first and you're definitely not going to be the first. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, I got love for you, so, bitch. I'm fucking yeah. with you, bro. <laughs> hey, MB, I was just fucking with you, brother. But the thing is, we actually answered that question twice on the show already. So if you get a chance to double back. The, la that, the one thing I hate about Supers is that We've already talked about it a lot. So it's like, if you get a chance to let me go back, we've literally talked about that numerous times on this specific show. So just run it back, check it out. Salute to UNB. We appreciate hey, it. Hey, 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 yo, you know another thing? I do not want to hear anybody bad mouthing Mitch. Only go. we could do that. Now you guys get the F out of here with your Mitchell Wrench slander. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love Walt, bro. He's hella funny. He said, I learned nothing from this show. <laughs> Yo, hey, real quick, Mitch, let everybody know, you know, what you got going on. Man, you got anything going on? You got any shows coming up? Let everybody know before we get out of here. Um, last week was a whirlwind. We were probably live last week for 40 hours, so I kind of wanted to take it a little bit easy. This week, though, tomorrow I'll be live at 4 p.m. Eastern time, and I think Chugs and I are going to get some Guinness going, so we're going to stock up for that. Tomorrow's Ooh. show might be a little crazy, but we'll, we'll be live Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Raiders Report at Mitchell Ren 365. Mitch, I need, to, I, need, I need to talk to James, and I need to come over there in person to one of those shows, and I want to take some shots and some boots with you in person. All right, hey, let's do it. It's, Holla at James. Let him know. All I'm saying is just prep your body. Like, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm going to pull okay. up, man. In person. <laughs> shout out to my boy Chuck. Shout out to my boy James. Let them know I would love to pull up in person and shoot, shoot the shit with the nation and have, have a no, good time. man. Guinness Stout is so nasty, bro. I can't believe y'all drinking yeah, that. You, you were the one that was drunk off of some strawberry fucking. Man, nipple. I'm not a drinker, bro. Listen, I, I, I am not a degenerate like you two. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Nah, I, this, this past week, I was like, I literally did not go out yesterday because all my buddies, like, they went out for St. Patty's and like, my body. I, I don't, I try not to drink outside of work. I really don't, especially after the week yeah. we just had. But yeah. uh, that's, that, that's a damn good job when you get to drink at work. Yeah. It, it's, it's cool, but it's starting to get to that age where I've said it before, you know. 46-year-old yeah. wasted doing beer bongs. You know, it's less cool. Uh, it's starting to become less cool. You know, I'm 31 now. So, yeah, we'll, uh, yeah. see how much I can hang up. I'll probably go until I got kids. Real quick, let me read this last super on the way out. Joe Milton, 6'5", 40. I think he's, I think son's a sleeper. How's he looking person? He, he looked great, and he took the combine by storm, but it's, a, it's the underwear Olympics. We already knew he was going to go out there and look like that with that arm strength. But me personally, John, I'm cool off of that. I think he has one particular strength, and that is the arm strength. Anything else outside of that, I, I question the vision. I question the accuracy. I don't think that he can make every throw at the next level. Now, if he goes somewhere, maybe Baltimore and learns behind, you know, you know, Harbaugh teaches him and he learns behind, maybe a, a Lamar Jackson, maybe he can be something. He, he's another guy that needs to go to a specific place and sit and learn behind a specific coaching staff. I don't think we have what it takes in order for him to be a regular. I actually thought the uh, team that was going to make a move for him was Philadelphia. Like, if I'm the Eagles, you saw – like, you drafted Joe Milton to be your backup quarterback. And I'm not – like, I literally said this. If I'm the Eagles, I draft Joe Milton as my QB3 just in case Jalen Hurts gets hurt. So that way you could put Joe Milton on the tush push. You draft him Ooh. on round five for that play alone, it's worth it. I like that. Salute to everybody here in the building once again. Brother, we appreciate you for pulling up on us. Salute, Salute to our brother, Mitch. Shout out to everybody, man. We will be back if anything else pops off. You know how it goes. Salute to the nation. We love y'all. We are out. One.